Credit Blaze. So welcome back. Um, last week we were just leaving the City of the Dead in Waterdeep when a new and far more sinister threat presented itself to the city. An enormous castle flying atop a hill of clouds, almost as if it had been plucked from a mountainside and just set afloat, had arrived at Waterdeep. As the castle situated itself over the City of Splendors, Waterdeep's defenses sprung into action almost immediately as you were all pushing your way through the chaotic, crowded streets full of people trying to escape the city. You saw knights mounted on Griffinback soaring through the air, and you saw Laurel Silverhand, the open lord of Waterdeep, had raised a great shield over the city. She was there with the Blackstaff, a young woman, and one of the youngest ever appointed to the station, um, there with her, assisting her in the defense of the city. It was soon pretty apparent that Waterdeep itself was fully capable of defending the city from this attack. Furthermore, the residents of this floating castle were in fact cartographers. After having made contact with the city's leadership and speaking with these creatures up in the sky, they did turn out to be cloud giants, and they had come to map out the region and had taken a special interest in Waterdeep believing it to be a site of great magical power from ancient times. The city's leadership contacted this group of cloud giants and were communicating with them, negotiating with them, and soon the castle was on its way, leaving Waterdeep behind it. After that whole situation had resolved itself, and you guys did some shopping within the city, you all set out north once more, stopping at the small town of Rasalantar, a trading village and outpost just north of Waterdeep, um, before continuing onward further north towards the town of Amphail. As we're arriving, I believe it was, I believe you guys decided to go straight through and double time it to get there in the evening, is that correct? Yeah, because there was some sort of festival. Right. So, yeah. after riding hard throughout the entire day, you finally do arrive at the town of Amphail, just in time for a riotous celebration. And that is where we're going to go ahead and pick up today. But there is just one last thing to go ahead and wrap up. So, Frederick. Yes? As you were leaving from Waterdeep, um, staying behind to try and wrap some things up with your estranged family before heading north, um, you began to hear rumors and things that your new sister-in-law might have had some unfortunate connections her, well, her motives might not have been very good. But as you began looking into this, your sister, who you did discover was a vigilante that was trying her best to keep the streets of water deep clear of the hill, she approached you and asked you to back off of it, that she had been working on it for quite some time, and that she had it well under control. She handed something over to you, something that she had been wanting to give to you, over a year since she acquired it in some less than less than legal ways. And so she gave this to you and sent you on your way, saying that she would contact you as soon as she knew and had some concrete evidence on what Cassandra, your brother's wife, was up to. So, with that, we have you meeting up with the group just as they're heading into Amphil. Okay. Alright. Uh, if you do have any questions, you want to go over any of that, feel free to send me some DMs. But um, yeah. but yeah, the Perfect. item that she did give you was a plus one wand of the war mage. She Ooh. had acquired it again in some less than legal ways, so she says, "Be careful who sees you using that." But <laughs> but yeah, so you can go ahead and drag that from the compendium. You can just do wand of the war mage and drag a plus one into your character sheet. Gotcha. Revan got a cool staff and a couple rolls on the magic item tables. I was explaining to the rest of you last time that um, whenever we do some quest-specific things, some character-specific quests, um, we can expect some pretty special loot at the end of it. Always a lovely thing. Alright. So, as you all approach Amphil, you in fact hear that there is a grand celebration underway. Um, you saw... 
dozens if not hundreds of people surrounding large bonfires. You can smell the meat cooking as you are approaching from way off. You can smell it on the And when you arrived, you guys saw that very boisterous large man atop a raised podium laughing and clapping and dancing along on top of that as the rest of the town celebrates me. So as you guys enter Amphil, Amphil, what would you all like to do? Well, uh, first order of business is of course finding a place for the horses and wagon. There would most certainly be a stable house just side of the city for you guys. Um, how least... large is this city? Not, that's not huge. Um, probably awesome. put the entire population with the outskirts and the outer farms and everything, just over 100. Awesome. So it's it's nowhere near water deep. Oh, no, no, no. Small place. No. Okay. Okay, okay. Dandy likes this place better. <laughs> you can take him, Dandy. Um, uh, I suppose the next order of business would be just kind of seeing who, well, kind of seeing the sights and sounds and seeing what we can find out at this place. Um, uh, are there any places where there are some folks kind of chatting and stuff or maybe able to overhear if they've seen any stuff relating to some of these giants and the like? Absolutely. So, um, it is late in the evening right now, as you guys got here, but there are most certainly a decent number of people just in groups, having drinks, sitting around tables while they eat all of the food that has been provided. Yeah, food! Oh yeah, there is tables upon tables of food, and people seem to just be walking up to them with plates and helping themselves. Dandy would like to use her shield as a plate. <laughs> So yeah, Dandy, as you approach the table, there is a couple people behind it, tending it, you know, keeping all that kind of stuff. And they say, Welcome, welcome, traveler! Welcome to Amphail! What brings you to town? Giants. And they say that as they're handing a plate towards you. Giants. It's okay, I brought my own. <laughs> say, giants! Giants! There's been no giants in these parts. Well, then you're lucky. They kind of give you a skeptical look and they say, Giants are but an old wives' tale. Oversized ogres at best, I'm sure. Uh, Dandy does not want to disillusion them of this and just sort of uh, gives them that sort of like, Oh, yeah, okay, sure, sure, nod, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely no, no giants. We definitely didn't see any over Waters Deep earlier. No problem at all. None whatsoever. <laughs> he he looks like his smile is starting to just like, okay. and then the guy next to him was just gonna be like, well, uh, well, enjoy yourselves. And he's patting his friend on the back. He's like, enjoy yourselves. Today is Talendar the Roaring Horns inauguration celebration. Uh, what's a Talendar Roaring Horn? That is a Talendar Roaring Horn. And as he points up, there's that man up on that ten foot podium, and he just throws out his arms he's like, yeah. <laughs> Big old bearded uh, guy, huge furs on, very very over extravagant. All right. And he's he's your new leader. Indeed, it's a tradition around here in Amphail. Every four years, a new leader is selected from among the people, and this year, <laughs> Talendar just couldn't be denied. How is the new leader selected? Is it some sort of a tossing contest? You would think that to look at him, wouldn't you? No, there is a select pool of people that are eligible from ancient family lines that live, that have lived here in Anfield for centuries. From among those people, the townsfolk simply select one. So it's voting in a way. Indeed. Awesome. Yeah, it's never, I just, why wouldn't everyone just vote for the king? Well, see, there is no true king of Amphail. 
There's three major houses, the Amkartha, the Ilzimmer, and the Roaring Horn. They each take turns deciding whose turn it will be to rule over the Amf over Amphail and the surrounding countryside. And in that matter, it probably prevents them from engaging in excess against one another. Indeed. If one of the houses was to act directly against the other, they wouldn't be eligible for the next year. System will never work. Oh, I think I like it. <laughs> he does say that, as you say that, he says, it has been the Amkarthra family for many years, though. He starts to oh, think. nice the Roaring Horn to get the chance. Indeed. Talandar is most certainly pleased. You guys see him up there, and he's just, like, upended an entire flagon of ale into his face. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Ten gold says he falls over. If I had ten gold, I'd take that bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh... Uh, tell me, uh, you mentioned that this was partially due to old tradition in this town. Nods. Are there any... Are there any folks here who know much about the history of the town I could speak with? He says, aye, aye. And then he points over towards the, uh, towards the podium and hanging out down below it, there's a few different people. Um, one of the only armed and armored people out here. And he says, Azumjor, the town historian, and also the captain of the guard. Oh, thank you. I appreciate your... I appreciate your help in this. A historian and a guard. I like well. it. He's over 300 years old, so he's had a bit of a heads up on most of us. <laughs> uh, side note, is that normal? Well, he's an elf, so yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that young for an elf, too? It's not super old. It's like middle-aged. Middle-aged? <laughs> 300 years. <laughs> you know, he's just 300 years old. He's just a middle-aged man. He's all this. I swear dandies weren't rubbing off on me because I was legitimately forgot there were other species. My bad, guys. <laughs> I'm, uh, Reverend might ease over there to ease over there to speak with the captain of the guard because uh, he's kind of thinking he should have at the last town. Check to see if it had a stone similar night stone anywhere. Yes. Would you mind if I come with you? Feel free. I follow Britain. Uh, can Dandy, um, like, go shot for shot or mug for mug with a yeah. roaring bubble, whatever his name was? I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead and make a performance check, Dandy. Okay. Can the constitution check, you'll beat him. <laughs> you pulled my character sheet, I'm sorry. Good. You said performance? Yep. Okay, so how are you trying to get his attention, Dandy? Uh, I'm going to bring a flagon over to him. He is 10 feet in the air on a podium. I'm going to whistle real loud. <laughs> okay, so for now, he does not hear you, and he does I... not seem to notice your attempts to get his attention. That's fine. I'm going to drink his beer. <laughs> okay, so Brevin and Frederick, you guys are heading over to talk to the town guard. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and what are the rest of you guys doing? Uh, for looking for work. Drink. So, Zorin, as soon as you approach anyone and ask about work, they give you this, like, face, like, there's no work to be done today, there's no work to be done for the next three days! It's a festival, my friend! How, how's the bard supposed to make a living? <laughs> Realization dawns on his face, and he looks down at your at your at your uh, at your instruments. What kind of instruments does Silver carry? A uh, viol. A viol. Okay. He looks down at your viol and says, "Well, you can certainly perform, and the audience will tip you, good sir. It is not considered work if you love it, right?" Soren considers that because he's always thought about it as work. <laughs> So, uh, okay. 
So he points over to the stage where a troop of acrobats is currently underway. He says, as soon as the stage opens up, whoever gets onto it first. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll make his way towards the stage. And Boris and Drake, what are you guys up to? I'm keeping my eye open for wrongdoers. Awesome. This this party won't won't distract me from my vigilance. <laughs> <laughs> Horace is the wet blanket. <laughs> and uh, Dandy, bring Horace a beer next. <laughs> so we're in mid afternoon right now. Uh, late afternoon. Uh, really? Late afternoon. Late afternoon. Okay. Late afternoon. Early All right. Evening. So, uh, assuming we're going to stay the night here, I'd probably be looking for where we're going to stay for the night. Okay. Um, as you're asking around, they tell you that all the inns in the town are open and free for the night and for the next two nights. There are two establishments, and they are packed. <laughs> I like this place. All right. All right. So, Revan and Frederick. As you approach the elven man, he's wearing he's wearing light armor. He's he's well armed. He has a bow and a sword, dagger. He's just he looks like he he looks like the only one here prepared for anything to go down. And as you guys outside approach, outside of horse, right? Aside from you guys, of course. <laughs> and as you guys approach him, when you're about maybe 10, 15 feet away, he kind of turns his head towards you, and you see that familiar sweep of just he checks your weapons, he checks your faces, your hands, all that stuff. And then turns towards you as you both as you all approach. As you both approach. I uh like bow and and greet him in Elvish. Just not knowing any better. <laughs> yeah. He responds back in Elvish and says, Greetings and welcome to Amphail. What can we do for all of you? Um uh Reverend is blinking at the Elvish as he has no idea what they said. <laughs> <laughs> he he looks towards Brevin and sees the sees the the lack of comprehension and then switches to Reverend. He's the state. <laughs> I'm uh Yes, uh your fellow townsfolks had stated that in addition to being captain of the guard, you were kind of the town historian. Uh yes. I have lived here and in the nearby Westwood for many hundreds of years. Uh, I had a couple of que I had a question. I had um, a, a question or two because, well, even disregarding your interest in history, as long lived as those of your race are, sometimes there is wisdom to be gathered from experience. And, uh, he fishes out a um, uh, the um, uh, little bookie, the black bound book he carries, and flips to the page where he has a drawing of the nightstone in it, and says, "Recently, on whenever my compatriots and I were on the other side of Waterdeep, there was a town that had been attacked with a stone similar to this. It was gathered up from it. I just wanted to make sure that this." town did not have a similar item in it. Because if so, and if so, I wanted to alert you because since that town had been assaulted to steal so that it could be stolen. Yes, he, he leans closer and kind of whispers. Cloud giants. Correct. Giants of, giants of some sort, we know. We're presuming cloud, but... Flying in castles in the sky, certainly cloud giants. But no, there is no stone of what of what you show here. No twin to what was in Nightstone here in Amphil. The closest. Well, it's interesting. The locations that they seem to be seem to be investigating. Before I tell you any more of this, who you all represent, if anyone? What are you? What are you doing? In my case, in my case, I am a investigator for the Lord's Alliance to try to determine what these giants are after and how much of a threat they are posing to everyone. 
and I just like look at him and he's like, uh, read him like, I am, uh, Frederick, and I am a representative of the Emerald Enclave. And I'm here to study the, um, the upsurge of giants and um, met these fine gents, and we're currently allied. So, he nods, says, places that they've been striking do have significance. There's artifact thought to have been lost nearly a millennia ago. An artifact very important to the giants. There is pieces of this artifact spread throughout the throughout all of the north, in fact. Again, this is just conjecture, and I have in my many years never seen any of these objects in person. There is rumors of one north of here, between here and Red Larks. The exact location is unknown. But it What's does seem likely that there might be one nearby. What sort of items are they? All I know is a name. The Vonenod. Vonenod. Uh, Brevin scribbles that down in his little booklet. <laughs> Would uh, Frederick have run into that name at all when he was studying the giants uh, with the Emerald Enclave? Um, I'm going to say the only one that might know about this is going to be Drake. Okay. So Drake, when you guys get up back there with together, you. right? Once you guys get back together <laughs> yeah. and relay this information, we'll check. Um, uh, is there any knowledge of what this uh? artifact is supposed to be able to do or how Shakes it works. Shakes' head says it took him nearly 15 years of consistent research just to find that much. Uh, curiosity of his younger years. Ooh. Why would I be connected to the Nightstone, though? Alright. Who knows? It could be a historical connection. It could be similar manufacture, or it could be something to do with magic in and of itself. For the spellcasting that the giant kin possesses is probably not similar to that that any of us possess. Far more ancient and far more destructive, possibly. Or if nothing else, purely from a different source if nothing else, I would suspect. Alright. Do they have any other questions for him? Uh, uh, I do have a question. Since we are out here looking around, have there been any problems or rumors of difficulties around this town that you know of? Or in the surrounding lands? It says, to be honest, it's been quite boring past 10 to 15 years or so in this town. I almost wish... No, no. Thought don't alone. say it. Don't, don't tempt the fates. <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> the goddess of chance tends to laugh in our faces whenever we say things like that. So, Silrin, why don't we go ahead and have you make your performance? Alright, nice. go ahead and roll Wait. a d12, Silrin. Oh, 20. We'll say that you can make 5 gold and 5 silver for your first round on stage. Um, Silrin, as soon as you are done performing, you see what looks to be a clown waiting to get on stage. He's like, he, he is a clown and a mime. He is mirroring all kinds of different things, not not speaking, not using his words at all whatsoever. Trying to, like, kind of motion to you that he wants onto the stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they let such rabble perform here? <laughs> as as I walk by, I'm just like, good luck. <laughs> uh, and and as I say good luck, I'm also gonna 
cast phase fire on him. Oh god. <laughs> god. Uh, not not to harm him, but right, right. just to like reduce his charisma checks. Right. <laughs> Gives a whole That's new meaning to break a leg. <laughs> so he gets up onto the stage and you see him, he is just like framing this like this wall in front of him, and you see him getting ready to look like he's about to climb the wall that he's just placed on. And You see him, like, look like he's smiling and he's doing the whole mime thing on the wall, like, making it look like he's got a wall in front of him, but there's nothing there. And takes a step and steps onto the wall that is not there. And then begins climbing five, six, seven feet up it until he is standing ten feet in the air on something that is not there. Then, does a backflip off of it, and lands flat on his back. <laughs> and as he does, he's like, oh! What a horrible mime. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't think he can grasp the, uh, the ideas of how to be a mime. He gets up like, oh god damn it. he starts... He's like cursing the entire way off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to think like, damn, someone just made a guy paralyzed with the waist down. He didn't grasp the gravity of the situation. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> we just saw a man just hit the ground ten feet. Come on now. <laughs> so Jake will come. Jake will come back, and after securing lodging for the night. Uh, he'll come back and see what everyone else is up to. And he'll come back just in time to see Silverman's beautiful performance. <laughs> and the mime clown's, uh, great fall. Okay. So, Dandy, why don't you go ahead and make one more performance check? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> She's not an actress, okay? <laughs> Such an inspiration. Um, you know what? Dandy, let's have a constitution check, too. Check, sure. Okay, then. <laughs> so, Dandy, as you are down, like, in the sightline of this guy just downing beer, just downing mug after mug after mug, and just trying to get this guy's attention, eventually, he looks down towards you and says, I want to drink! And he looks around and he's like, I do not know her! Who is this? Uh, how many have I had? <laughs> um, we'll say that it took you, what, four flagons to get his attention finally. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to, um, spell to the much charm as I can muster and tell him my name. <laughs> So, he then says, The barrel! With a big smile on his face. Like, does that mean he wants me to bring him a barrel? No, like, there was a question mark at the end of that. Yeah. And so, <laughs> he shouts and says, The barrel! And before you, he even finishes the shout, there is somebody standing behind you with like a keg, like a small round, like a like a small like a cask is what this what the Ooh. cask is the word I'm looking for. All right, so, now the party started. And then they take one up to him. The, a couple guys have to like climb up the the um, the lattice work of the platform that he's on, but they bring it to him, and he says, "On three, and he <laughs> uncorks it. The one he has. Okay. Do I get one? Yes, the, I'm sorry. Someone has handed you one as well. All right, on three. <laughs> All right. So a whole bunch of people around have paused and begun watching, and they begin a countdown. Guidance. And... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll pull up my D4. <laughs> that fucking timing, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for cursing. Nah. <laughs> Ready okay. when you are. <laughs> what kind of check would a drinking contest be? I mean, we all know it's going to end with a constitution save. How does it start? Hmm. It has to be speed, constitution. Speed, speed agility, how fast they can drink. <laughs> Dexterity. <good>. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> So we're gonna no. start off with a with a dexterity check, just straight dexterity check. Like, I guess. Nice. Hey. All right. So as both you and Mr. Tillandar Roaring Horn lift your mugs up, and you guys can see, just like the crowd has begun to silence around them. They're just in awe of how quickly these two are able to get those things up and down. And then we're gonna go ahead and make that Constitution save. <laughs> Good my guidance. Right, going at it. Thirteen versus his. Okay, so you, use an ins use your inspiration. Ah. Use your inspiration. Just do it. This is important. Do it. Do do it. it. Six or D eight. Oh, oh no, no, no. This, no, we take the nineteen. Sessional. <laughs> oh, oh, is it sessional? I thought it was at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Dandy, you can go ahead and take the 19. Okay. For, some, for things you. like this, I might make exceptions to how many times you guys can use that. <laughs> this is a port it to us. This Daddy has to win. <laughs> so, after like a few moments go by, the crowd around you all has stopped. And they're just like gawking at the two of you. And you guys can see Tillandar like side eyeing. He's rotated. And he, so we can see Dandy. <laughs> you guys can see concern. The little bit of sweat rolls down his rolls down the side of his head. <laughs> oh, and, he, and Dandy, you are able to go for a good thirty seconds after he is like. <laughs> it's through your dominance. <laughs> uh, while I'm still drinking, if I have a towel or something, I'm gonna throw it up to him. He grabs it as he's like. <laughs> <laughs> He's wiping his face off, and he says, oh. he "says the chair." And he points down to Dandy, and Dandy, three, four guys come up with this chair, like white furs, spotted with all kinds of different colorful things. It is very clearly like the like what are those, the palanquin type throne things. And he looks down and says, "You've earned it." <laughs> I'm just gonna. Thumbs up. <laughs> so anyone looking around now would see Dandy being carted around on four people's shoulders as they like kind of do the whole like raising thing with it every now and then, and they are parading her around the festival. Uh, she is 100% doing the Princess Diana hand wave <laughs> to the <laughs> the people. <laughs> like completely shit faced. <laughs> 100%. This is great. <laughs> Speaking of that, Dandy, I do need one more constitution save. Sure. Yes! Fall, fail! Fall, fail. Fall. Yes! 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> Falls off the chair from your two trunk. No, no, pukes on everybody. <laughs> Dandy, I will let you decide what this failure means. Uh, it means as she is being uh, toted around like a princess, uh, she is snoring very loudly. <laughs> <laughs> Big smile on her face. <laughs> okay. Of all the Check times we fail, this is like the perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Is there anything else you guys would like to do while you're here, while this festival is still raging on around you all? I think, I think Frederick's gonna get a drink as well now at this point. <laughs> Enjoy himself a little bit. With flinch. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, can Pseudo Dragons get drunk? What's that? Can Pseudo Dragons get drunk? <laughs> Out of curiosity. Can who? Sorry, I, you, I, keep, I keep losing your right when you say who. <laughs> Do Pseudo Dragons. Uh, oh, Pseudo Dragons. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, I just imagine Flinch is a curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> and. Flinch is most certainly of mind to to partake if he wishes. 
<laughs> he's, he's, he's a curious one. He sees Dandy doing it, he's probably gonna do it too. <laughs> Obviously, she's a role model. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just be drinking uh, with the two of us, and that's it. And it was... As the festival rages on around you all, I need everybody, except for Dandy, to make perception checks, please. She passed out. <laughs> Give me a moment. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, I suppose. Right oh, I suppose my screaming familiar might need to do one too. <laughs> what uh? If your familiar is out and with you, then yes, the familiar can also make perception checks. Oh yeah, I need one for lunch as well. Why is it doing that? Uh, is this a perception check that relies upon hearing or sight? It is a perception check that would rely upon hearing specifically for your familiar, not for the rest of the world. Okay. Okay, he gets advantage on hearing. So, so um, oh, that's a... a mm, right, yep, it's a 13 there. I can, yeah, so... Yeah. No, you're, 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 everybody's good. Okay, so... um. Have those of you that are still wandering around, you, uh, Drake, you said that you met up with the rest of the group. Does that mean that uh, they yep. had a chance to relay that information to you? I would say so, yes. Okay. So, after Brevin and Frederick kind of meet back up with the rest of the group, witness the spectacle of Dandy's drinking contest with Talandar, who is now no longer running around and jumping and sneak He's sitting on his chair. Like, he, he still has a very pleased look on his face, but he's just, like, arms at his side, dangling off the chair, just, like, swaying. <laughs> um, it's probably getting a little bit later now. We're probably well into the evening at this point. And, um, so, yeah. So, Drake, why don't you go ahead and make that history check for us? Hmm. Okay. So, oh, Drake, the, the word the bone definitely dot definitely, definitely, definitely resonates with you. Um, you know it to be an ancient giant relic of some kind, but with a 14, exactly what it was still escapes you. Um, you know that it was an instrumental tool that they used in the war against the Black Hunters several thousand years ago. Okay. I will relay said information. Okay, so we got some, we at least know where to start at as far as we're poking around on this journey. So that's good. How much? Uh, I, I guess our next stop will be that one location the, uh, the guardman told us. He didn't really give you guys a location. He said it's somewhere between here and Red Larch. And if you guys look at the map, somewhere between here and Red Larch is like Pretty significant area. <laughs> I don't know. I, th I think we would like scour the whole thing, maybe like in two years. <laughs> or you just prepare, or you just prepare yeah. the spell for it. Just search the whole area of the spell. <laughs> That's true. I think there is spells that are that powerful, but they're like eighth or ninth level spells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you know exactly what, if you know exactly what you're looking for, you can just do locate object, but. <laughs> I don't think Drake. <laughs> I don't I don't think Drake's familiarity with the Bone and Dodd will get him to it. And even then exactly. the best thing to do would be to get him to one of the many pieces of it that is scattered around here. Around mm -hmm. here. Like, when I say here, uh, I mean like the entirety of the north. <laughs> Man, I love be... zooming out on this map and zooming back in. I'm super stoked as able to find such a high level map in this place. I'm like telling Brendan and uh, Drake, do you think that the the pieces that the giants are grabbing might be just be forging materials to make the weapon? Whatever it is they're planning on doing with it, I'm certain it is not something that this world is ready for. And it's something that needs to be stopped. Well, that's 
almost a given. I mean, with the power that they currently have, yeah, <laughs> they're able to ha- they are able to have hassles sized for them fly around, just fly and float through the air like a lily pad on a pond. Take another swig of my ale, and it's like, like you know, we should probably get dragons involved. I heard of a, uh, I learned that dragons and giants fall all the time. That's like a, that's like a spitball joke. So, um, Daniel, let's get another con save from you real quick. Sure. You come to. And now I need everybody to make those perception checks. Uh, everyone make a perception check again? Everybody. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, okay, bad for you, Ad. I feel like the alcohol made Dandy more perceptive. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the alcohol screwed me, but... Alright, I'm gonna flinch. So, Silrin. Um, where are you at right now? What are you, what are you doing? Okay. He basically has... Flinch got in that 20. <laughs> um, most likely he's somewhere near the stage watching the other performers, seeing what they have. Um, so as you're hanging out by the stage, Silrin... There's a few a few flagons that have been left abandoned nearby, and you catch out of the corner of your eye, it looks like one has just rippled. The liquid inside of it sending little shockwaves out. Oh, the bad roll terrible. Focus on it again, and you would notice that a few moments later you see another one of those ripples emanate from the center. And Dandy, you are jolted awake, and you suddenly feel like an earthquake just happened. You don't know why. Something in your sleeping subconscious mind just screamed earthquake. And that's what jolted you awake just now. Okay. Um, and... I'm going to hop down off my litter, if that's okay. <laughs> All right. Yep. The guys don't even seem to notice. They still just wander around with it raised up and down. Hey, Sean. Uh, good question. Yep. Uh, how do I make it so the... The checks for Flinch doesn't go to straight GM. Got it. Yep. Uh, so you're going to click on your settings uh, for the character sheet specifically. Okay. And then in there, there's going to be options that say never whisper rules. Or it's, it'll, it'll say right now, always whisper rules. You want to switch that to never whisper rules. Gotcha. Um, Thank you. So, Dandy, as you jump down, you sense this, right after you land, this vibration in the ground. You wait a few more seconds, and then it's something almost familiar to you. You remember it when... When um, the mastodons of the of the frozen north would be marching, very similar oh. to that. I'm gonna try and find my my friends. And Frederick, where exactly is um, is um, Stitch? Well, Flinch. Flinch, sorry, yes, Flinch. Well, he'd be with me. So you would notice him cock his ear up and stretch his neck out really long. And cock his ear as if he's listening for something very intently. And then he's going to kind of angle down towards you. And I've never really asked you, how do you and Flinch communicate? Is it telepathically? Do you, do you speak a language? Do you speak draconic to each other? Uh, so... Sylvan? Pardon? Uh, what, uh, no, 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 so how do you, how you guys communicate with each other? So basically, Flinch doesn't really speak uh, the best. He does, like, general ideas of what's happening. It's like basically, if he if he t- if he t- asked him to describe a dress, like, he would he would just like basically describe uh, the fabric and the color. Like he would just basically gives like general ideas of what's happening. Not and a does he in, does he send that to you telepathically? Like 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 brief bursts of um, of ideas that he sends to you. Yeah. So like yeah. So basically, what, what, in this kind of situation, he would just be immediately giving like oh something something look exactly. look where like what's happening like look. Like, Turn, turn, so look over as here. soon as you see him tilt his head up and stretch his neck all the way out, he'll immediately grab eye contact with you and send you the thought, something's coming. Something big. Dandy, okay. Sorin, and Frederick. Yeah, yeah that just like immediately sobers me up because like, I don't think Flinch was ever, um, like, other than the, the, the rotten monster, he is this startled. Okay. 
Sorin? The other two that are aware uh, something is happening? I'm... I think Sorin's gonna try and find the highest point he can climb. Like, get up top and try and see where it's coming from. Okay. Can, uh, Flinch see you? Uh, Sorin? Or would he be able to see you? I have no idea. I'm near the stage area. Yeah, you guys aren't really near the stage, so... Um, we'll say that, that Flinch notices him as soon as Sorin gets climbing up towards the second story of the building. Uh, Flinch will notice So, him. just for preparation, I'm just going to immediately cast Mage Armor as a, as a reflex and just, like, send Flinch with Sorin. Okay. And I just, like, just raise my arm up as he runs up and just flies at, just flies at him. Okay. And Dandy. Um... Which of the party does she come upon first? Because she's just going to tell them that there's something they come, come away. On Drake and Dra uh, Drake and Horus first. I'm gonna literally just tell them there's something big coming. I can feel it. Um, I'll turn to her and be like, "Are you sure it's not just the alcohol you drink? I, that was quite impressive, by the way." I think this might be a good time to not talk back to me and maybe listen for once. <laughs> <laughs> mom, mom over here. <laughs> Mama suffered uh, up quick. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, so, all right, Sean, are we with? Are we all together? Or are we just no? Like, you guys are you guys are pretty spread out right now. Um, okay. so as from what I'm seeing right now, um, Silrin is climbing a building. Um, Brevin is probably nearby. Frederick and Dandy has just run into Drake and Horace. Um, you guys are all within like thirty or forty feet of one another, but there's so many people milling about that. You don't really see each other. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. Uh, after after, after she gave me such a serious, such a serious response, I'm like, okay, that's not what I expect. Maybe something's up. And I'm like, okay, uh, I guess we'll take a look. Uh, I just like turn to Brevin and it's like, you gotta get ready. <laughs> I don't know what's coming. Before. It really got flinch. I'm uh, I go head in. Uh, okay. The first thing I do is I uh, make sure I have my the brought in staff in hand. Dude, you got two fast hour toys. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I do the little shillelagh cantrip upon the quarter staff just in case I need it. <laughs> shillelagh on a pack to, on a on a rod of the pack keeper. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, I don't. Uh, I was actually going to ask you if it would work on the rod of the pack keeper because I don't know what it's. Does anybody know a ruling on that that exists already? Uh, is Should is it made? Of, is it is the rod of the pack keeper made out of only wood? The thing is, if there's wood in it, it should work because that tends to be yeah. the big thing. If the main look at you, the can use the, you can use the improvised Here's... rules and treat it as a club, which the shillelagh cantrip does cover. Yeah. So. The way I see it is, it is like the one part of the staff you wouldn't be able to use because it's has like the, the pearl or whatever on it. But if you were to flip your staff around, then theoretically speaking, you could just use the wood side. Like or could or could just hold rod in one hand and just have the quarter staff in the other, whichever way. <laughs> then you wouldn't be able to use the versatile stat, the two handed. Oh, but uh, it, 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 it doesn't it, matter it with which lately, which yeah. lately it bumps into one d eight regardless. There you go, double staffing. Plus, uh, <laughs> Basically, a 1d8 plus your spellcasting mod instead of the usual strength mod. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, I guess at this point, like, Flinch was just, like, lined with you? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, if Flinch knows at least the general direction, I think we're gonna, uh, Soren's gonna cut. Uh, a part of his hair off and give it to Flinch and we'll do the uh, old reconnaissance way we used to. Nice. Gotcha. Because uh, I can also communicate with him using my eerie token. Perfect. Uh, so I'll, I'll telepathically communicate with Flinch to go up high and see what's making that noise. Awesome. Great. So, Sean, uh, what direction is Flinch looking at? Or what, what, Flinch, do you, what, what does Flinch see? Flinch would be looking to the southeast. And as he takes off, and takes off with a piece of Silverman's hair, just like you guys did that, just like you guys did that last time, um, he would take off and start flying in that direction. And it wouldn't take him long to see three hulking figures moving through the darkness across the hills to the southeast of you. 
They are moving. Does have night vision. Right, I know. Um, they are moving. It, it almost looks like they're moving slow. Like they're moving in slow motion, but as Flinch circles around and tries to keep up with them, they're actually moving very quickly. And as Flinch pulls up behind them to kind of track their direction, he sees that the bright lights, roaring fires, and roaring fires of Amphail's celebration are drawing them like a moth to a flame. Flinch also gets this huge whiff in the air of all of that cooked meat. These three brutish creatures are mindlessly not running, but even their fast walk very quickly. You can see that, right, Silver? Or <laughs> yeah. Would you be able to see that? I, could, I would use remote viewing, and as long as it's within 10 miles, I can see. Definitely within 10 miles. Because at that point, just Flinch would just fly straight back to me. Okay. And... Judging by the speed at which Flinch tells you guys, I'm assuming you guys have all gathered back together in the town in like somewhere somewhere central, correct? Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would try to be gathering everybody, yeah. yeah. So. And I, I just, as like Flinch is closer and closer like to the, within range, all I hear is big, 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 <laughs> big. big. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is happening in my head? <laughs> I see a panic flinch just flying to a torpedoing straight in. <laughs> so are they coming from the north, the east, south, or the west? They are coming from the southeast. Southeast, all right. Uh, I'm assuming you tell us about uh, what's going on. Uh, all I can tell you is there's three things coming in. Very big and bright lights. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll turn I'll turn to Horace and be like, uh, do you want to alert the ta the town captain? He seems like he's the only one ready for a fight. He's probably you'd probably be able to organize the people. Where where are the town guards? Well, the only one that you've seen was at the center with the uh, with the now nearly asleep Tillandar Roaring Horn at the top of that podium. He was standing at the bottom okay. of the podium. Uh, I run to the town guard. Okay. He turns um, uh... towards you. The town is under attack. Sound your horns. I'm uh. Wow. Kind of, tell him coming from the southeast. <laughs> he kind of gives you this wide-eyed look for a brief moment, and then he turns and shouts out, "To arms!" And then he looks towards you all, and as you guys hear the very first scream come from somewhere far to the southeast. It sounds distant, but after, right after, you hear something crash. It sounds like it's out in the hillsides still, but unfortunately. And uh, as that shut happens... Shut up, for cover! He, he looks towards you and he says... The... He looks towards you and he's kind of, he's kind of, you can see him, his eyes close for just a moment, and then when he opens them again, there's this look of just pure shock on his face, and he turns towards you and he says... Anfield does not have the facilities to fend off this kind of attack. I can see... Uh, now it's a party! <laughs> <laughs> so he says, I will get the people as far from the town as I can. That is all that I can do, is there? You you, you must be able to do something about this. How many... I I... I'll walk up behind Horace with like a fire in my eyes and be like, Get all, get all the people safe to safety, and we'll do our best Talendar, to. Talandar, isn't he a great fighter? Out. He looks up towards him, and Talandar is just like asleep on his back. I don't think. I think even the best of us is not the best of fighters if in that condition. <laughs> um, but he is Sean. your king. He's only king if he lives through tonight. <laughs> Oh, what was so the, you're uh, saying oh. it's an assassination. He looks towards you and he says, I'm not sure what this is, but I can feel whatever is shaking the earth and Well, I'm going to get I'm going to get Tilindar out of here. And then he gestures towards a few townspeople. And you see that he comes over and there's a lever on the side of the podium and he pulls it and then the platform that the that the that Talandar is on just begins descending on pulleys and ropes until it hits the ground. Like they knew this was going to happen, that he was gonna fall asleep up there. So <laughs> So yeah, so they load him up oh, and wow. they start getting him out and you guys can hear 
people beginning to shout and more of that crashing coming from the southwest. Southeast. Um, uh, this could potentially be foolhardy to do due to the size of these things, but I am uh, shaking my bat familiar, which it has passed out after gorging itself on a table. <laughs> and it wakes up and hisses at me. And I am uh, hand it a and I hand it a one of the bags of caltrops I have and say try, if they aren't wearing any shoes or boots, try to scatter this in front of one of them just to slow them down a little bit. Okay. I am unsure if it will work or not with the size of these things, but it might at least slow them down a, t a tiny bit. <laughs> How big did um did did you say they were? Like So the flinch was uh Silrin, what you were seeing would put them in a very well we'll, we'll say they're that they were that they were at least fifteen to twenty feet tall, if not taller. It was dark and all you were only seeing them silhouetted against the against the the light of Amphail. So difficult to make out their exact size. Do know that they are coming from the southwest, and time is short. Uh, no, no. Uh, southwest being this side? Around in this corner, correct. So we have okay. the central platform, the podium here in the center. The rest of Amphail out between, out, or all around. There are several tables laden with food, and the roasting pits are also in this square that you guys are in. Hmm. <laughs> Well, well, we, we set up let, some traps. Ideas, plans. If there anything like mammoths, which is kind of what they felt like to me when they were running, let's aim for their eyes. Let's, let's assume, drop. Let's, let's assume they're after the food, and they're not. They don't care about the town. We gather all the food and we throw it all into one place and gather and, and, and away from the town, just like just outside the town. Or if nothing else. I would say you guys have about run. five rounds. Let's drop uh, back from where the food is. Let them come to it while we're around corners. Yeah. I would suggest some of us be, uh, be in positions to open fire if need be, if they aren't willing to just take it and go. Uh, but we also want to reduce damage to the town as well. If if uh, they if, if, they, if, they, if, they, if, they, if these are just wild beasts, then they're just going to, you know, not care about you know, housing and stuff. They're just going to destroy everything. That's why I'm saying we should try to get them all to all avoid housing. Out. Yeah. I say let's try that first, then. Set an area outside of town, then if they try to proceed further into town... Um, I would say that you guys do not have the time needed to gather the stuff and take okay. it to the outside. In that case, if we don't have time for that, uh... For starters, we need to see what we're facing. What if I were? What if I were to just burn all the food so it, it smells burnt? No, they're being attracted by the light as well. The light? Right. That is no. what. That is what uh, Lynch and Silver were able to see is that they look like they they smelt the food and that's what's drawing them, but they're just walking straight towards the light. Yeah, it's the whole. It's the middle of the night. So what if we just shiny and possibly yeah, so radiant follow? Yeah. Running out of time. Yeah, so like, like perhaps the flying freaking Asimar. Sounds like we don't have enough time to do that either. Yeah. Um, um, all right. If you to, want to, to, to to cast Radiant Soul and fly. No, I just don't think that'd be enough to distract them to get them to get away from the town because there's still everything here happening. I thought well, we were trying you... to bring them. I thought we were trying to bring them in. They're well, the re the original idea was. Get them, get them to stay outside the town so they don't damage any, damage the town. But if we don't have time to do that, damage, I'm hurting them. yeah, yeah. But we apparently don't have time for that. So our best odds is simply position ourselves in a way that yeah. we can best deal with the threat. We have to either see what their actions are going to do and respond accordingly. We could run outside of town and meet them before they get to the town. That is the other option as well. Yep. I was think I was think I was actually was thinking about that too. If we all just rush to the outside here, we can start throwing spells or bows shots at them before they hit the town. Okay, so we could probably, probably from where we are right now, we could probably get there in two turns. We'd have about three turns of like ranged combat before they can hit us. 
Yeah, so what we could do is we could, go, we could do this. We could head in right now. We could try to meet him halfway or attempt to meet him halfway and try to cr uh, create a surprise attack. You know what I mean? Because if we go head, just head first, we're going to immediately get punished for that. Not necessarily. Like, if, if we start over here, if we start in this area and we just literally throw stuff at them before they even get to us, we could potentially take one of them down before they even hit us. And having That's one less enemy deal with attack. is very easy. That's what I'm saying. Surprise attack. Well, what, what you're saying is, like, we hide and then wait for them to get closer to us, which means we're no, no, missing out on attack them turns. Half, we meet them halfway and attack, attack them without just being right in front of them. Uh, we know they're we know they're approaching on the southern corner of the town. Correct. Yes. So if we're desiring to face them and drive them off, that's where we have to be gathered up in order to try to drive them off. Uh, how um, long would it take me to get on top of one of the houses? Uh, just a round. It'll take two rounds. Two, two rounds to get on top of a house. Two rounds to get on top. Uh, well, I feel Please. like that's being pretty generous. <laughs> Uh, uh Revan has a question for Dandy. Uh, does she want a crossbow to engage them with before when they're outside the javelin range? Is that something I'm proficient with? Uh, Marshall, I, think what, Barbarian... I don't think I don't think Barbarian has proficiency with heavy crossbow. Oh, it's a light crossbow. Uh, that's a simple weapon, then probably. Okay. Right. If it's, if it's, yeah, then that'd be great. Thank you. So I'll yeah, spend so I'll spend three turn plus. I'll spend three three of my five turns to get up onto this house here. Also, also just we could try diplomacy first. I don't yeah. speak. As I'm they're getting this. as they're getting as they're getting closer, and we can just start to get get a much, a much better view than what does it look like they are. So as they're approaching, um, let's get everybody where you want to be when things actually start to happen. So go ahead and place your guys okay. if you guys. Are you guys moving farther southeast, or are you seeing towards the town square? Southeast. I, I, I mean, I would actually like to get out of town, but I'm not sure if we have enough time yeah. to meet them. But I would like to get as far away from the center of town as possible okay. to, to meet them. So You yeah. said southeast, southwest? Give me approximately 60 seconds. Please. Okay. Um, my next question is, guys, if we do have to sacrifice a building, the one that... Hold on, let me zoom in on whoever that is. The yeah, one that, sorry. No, you, you go, you go ahead. I'm just trying to figure out who this is. Uh, sorry, let me zoom. When the Drake's on, would be the one that uh, if we can't keep them out, that'd be the only one that would really be like a direct line to center a town. Like, let's minimize the dare coming in. Let's just minimize the damage. You guys, have until I finish making this map. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap, the map keeps going. Could, oh, could oh, we also the... continue following south? Like, as you build the map? I, I guess so. Oh, well, that's more. I thought it was because it was clearly from that corner, so we need to get further that way. Don't just dropping we? in lighting, guys. Okay, so just move them as you're moving them. Got it. <laughs> okay, okay. Gotcha. yep, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. Ignore the houses, just keep going, <laughs> just keep running. <laughs> See. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Alright, let me go on top of here. There we go, on top of the house. Is there oh man. There? Poor Horace. He's got little legs. I I'd probably just stop here and see if I could take one range attack before they hit us. <laughs> you guys getting light as I drop these in? Uh. I've had light the whole time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. The whole the whole map's open for us. It is dark time. So. Oh. It's dark time. <laughs> we are on top of buildings. Whoa. Oh. 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 There's a few of you guys in the dynamic lighting. Nice. One second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Frederick. Uh, Frederick, could you uh take Fitch and drop my eerie token onto? The lead giant. Um, wait. Something happened. Yeah. Why, yeah. why is the token being moved? Uh, you guys were inside of dynamic lighting, so I'm not sure. Oh, my bad. Oh, okay. I see. Oh. 
Yeah, because we're, we're trying to stay on top of the roof house because there's some okay. Yeah, yeah, we're so trying to get on top of the building. Let's call, you were what buildings do you guys? You know what? I can just do yeah. this here. Right. I was trying to be at the top of the building while it's on. Yeah, sure. I'll, I could definitely do that, Silverin. Um, the only issue is, can Fletch avoid them? Um, uh... Oh, that is so cool. I can see the whole. Oh, that is awesome, Sean. With Fletch, that's, that's so cool. Okay. Um. Yeah, I could do that exactly, uh, Silverin. I might not be able to speak giant, but telepathic messages. Uh, just I don't. I, I just. Guy. Can I help you through that? I mean, you. I oh, the only one that'll have the eerie token I'll be able to talk to, kind of. So the other two, I have no idea what they'll be saying. <laughs> Quick, how do you say your mom? <laughs> mm. All right, guys, the time is up. They are approaching. They have entered your yeah. sights. They are thirty feet south of the map as they come. Alright, so, wanna go, wanna go for that plan, Silver? Let's go yeah. ahead and... Oh, wait, crap. <laughs> I, can't, I think we can't do this anymore. Oh, he rolled an 18, this boy. Oh, oh I need my bat. Where the heck's he at? <laughs> my useless scream. Great. <laughs> I mean, son of a gun. <laughs> uh, do I have a token or anything for him? I'm not. Well, there's a deal here, but uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there it is. It'll just be flying around somewhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, he needs initiative too. <laughs> All right, guys. It looks like we're looking at a late break today. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Uh, or we can take our break now. It's up to you guys. It's all good. The goblin is at her grandma's house. Ah, sweet. Let's do it. Okay, let's let's go. That whole, that whole drinking fiasco was the break. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 30 feet south of the map, everybody. Okay. Frederick, you are up first. I'll so say that one, uh, they are crossing through a field right now. You have clear sight lines. Right now. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, is Frederick first, or am I missing somebody? Yep, Frederick is first. Yeah, I should be first. Okay, so... I'm just gonna go with Sylvan's plant. Flint should, should still have that locket of hair, of what we had. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... I'll skip my turn and go straight to uh, Flint's and set him out. To hopefully... Try to talk to this guy. Do you want to hold an action, or Uh, I'll definitely hold an action. Uh... So, you said 30 feet away, right? 30 feet south of the map. 30 feet south of the map. I'll hold a witch bolt. Okay. What's the condition? So, uh, since 30 feet, it's still within radius. Uh, if flinch, or if, if like, if a whole thing goes south, that's when I'll, I'll send with the witch bolt shot. Okay. I do really enjoy vague um, triggers, but that's a little too vague. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Aggressive action by the large people? Yeah, so... Uh, Aggressive so action by the large people works. <laughs> yeah. Aggressive behavior <laughs> of sorts. All so right. basically, if he if he tries to switch, swat and flinch, or if he just like starts to charge or do anything... Okay, but the, the aggressive behavior is, is vague enough. It, we'll, we'll go ahead and leave it at that, so it doesn't have to get too specific. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. If, if, if Silver gives a signal, basically, if Silver says okay to, to attack, <laughs> I'll send Flinch down towards, um, towards the guy. So, uh, how, do I, how do I move Flinch? Um, leave him at the edge of the map for now. Okay, I'll, I'll like, put him right in that little corner piece. There we go. Alright, so what exactly I, does Flinch do? Uh, so, F Flinch is bringing the little locket, so, so grand could attempt to communicate. I think we're, so, we're close enough to just yell at each other to explain what's happening. Because uh, Silverbrim wants to communicate right with them, right? Yeah, I want to use my uh, eerie token ability telepathic message. Okay. Uh, so if uh, Frederick can drop the token onto one of the giants, I'd be able to communicate with him. Okay. So Flint would just like, fly in. Like Any article of clothing they got, he would just like, try to like nudge in the token. 
Make a make a sleight of hand check for flip for fit for flinch, please. Yes, your power and I do the best. Uh, just straight dexterity. Oh, straight dexterity. Should I actually? Oh. So Flinch is able to fly up to the approaching dragon, and I mean, I'm sorry, no, it is not a dragon. Do not panic. I was, I was about to say, just freak <laughs> oh, a dragon. Oh my god. <laughs> sorry. Um, the approaching. Oh, the, roof. <laughs> the approaching giant. And s manages to slip a, that piece of Silren's hair into the giant's bag. The giant has noticed nothing. So, Silren, we'll say that you can send your message now. Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, I'll be like, whoa, 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 <laughs> big guy, big guy. Uh, why are you guys coming this way? The one on the farthest one stops and starts looking around. You guys can see, like, the outline of him, and you can you can make him out. He's looking around, and then he sees a cart next to him, and he <laughs> just starts staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. The other two are still coming. <laughs> uh, I I get twenty five words. Okay. So I think I got to wait till my turn to use it yeah, again. Yeah, we'll wait till your turn, and we'll yeah. say that the first one, the initiative, is the one that you've stalled. Candy, go ahead. The Jazz will worship that card. <laughs> um, are we trying diplomacy first, here, guys? Attempt. That's... If everybody, you know what, let's say the three in the front. Revan, Frederick, and Dandy, make inside checks, please. Okay. Check on my insight. I'm rolling very good for some reason. Go ahead. Okay, so... Could be better, could be worse. <laughs> Frederick and Brevin, you notice that the one... There is one coming straight from here, and he has his eyes locked on the town square. He is staring right at that big old thing of food that is there in front. The other one seems to be like, you guys notice that he's got his head up and every now and then he sniffs at the air, and then just starts walking in the direction that his nose is dragging him. Um, do I at least notice that the one up front is locked on the town square? Um, with the five, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you've, I don't think you've gleaned any information. I'm, uh, I'm just like rubbing my head, like, oh, it's, the it's the food, it's the food, they just want the food. All right, uh, I'm gonna rage because that's what I do, okay. and throw a javelin at him because that is also what I do. That's <laughs> dumb. <laughs> uh, fifteen at disadvantage. He is most certainly out of range of your javelin currently. Oh, okay. But 15 does hit. Roll damage. Cool. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it twice. I'm so, sorry. seven. So, it strikes him in the gut, like a, a, in a substantial gut it is. And he looks down at it for a moment and kind of tilts its head off to the side and starts looking around and then just pulls it out and looks at it and then just drops it and continues. The audacity. If I could rage twice, I would. The <laughs> audacity. <laughs> All right. um, I think that's all I've got. <laughs> so so you guys evil. see the the giant that Silren had dropped his had sent that message to, and it is still just sitting there, wide eyed, jaw dropped, staring at this cart. Silren. I will use my action to send a message again to it. Uh, if I could see it looking at the cart, oh, yeah, I would just be like, no, 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 uh, people, people of the city are talking to you. Can you tell your friends to stop? I don't know why you're coming, but if you come any closer, we're going to be really angry. He is just like looks up from the cart and he looks at like one of the houses, looks at another one of the houses and the one that he's looking at has got like the situation of the two windows and then the door beneath it, it kind of looks like a face. He's like, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, he turns and just runs in the other direction. You guys are doom, 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 and ah, ah, the entire time. Oh, what did you just tell him? I just look at the group and be like, 
I got rid of one. That's my job. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You scared so, him off. How close are they right now to us? Um, they are from you, Frederick. The two have not gotten to their turns yet, so they are 55 feet south of you. Oh, okay, so can like can we tell what what they're wearing? Like, like can we just describe what? The, like, can we tell like what they do? Um, based on what they're wearing and carrying. Uh -huh. It's like you know how they like can you? if they have a, a large weapon, a uh, well, shirt. Uh, okay. He was He's... a calligrapher. He, <laughs> he looks so nice. He looks so huggable. Look at that belly. He looks like one of the giants from Attack on Titan. Yeah. And look how great they were. <laughs> All right. So... Thankfully, not quite so big. Okay. Okay. Revan. Um, uh, first thing I'm going to do is use one of my forms of dread. Uh, so that'd be uh, 10 plus my warlock level, so 14 extra hit points, so... Bumps me up to <clears throat> forty-one. <laughs> well, heck, come on now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure heck is. <laughs> so okay, I'm uh, and as to do that, I'm going to five, ten, fifteen, twenty, uh, whichever. One is the nearest. I'm going to attack it with an Eldritch Blast. Okay. I'm pretty sure that'll hit. Oh, yeah. He is quite large. Uh, but it should also have a plus four on that because of the, um, uh, I have Agonizing Blast as an evocation, so that should be seven damage. Seven? Okay. Yeah, and he also should have to now make a Wisdom Saving Throw or be frightened of me where he can't get closer. Let me check what the DC is for that, though. He actually does surprisingly <laughs> well. Yeah. Is, is, is it 17 or higher? I don't think it's 17. Okay, I think it's going to be lower than that. Surprisingly uh, good score roll for him. As you guys have seen, they are not the wisest, but he just rolled really high. Yeah. Hey, that happens sometimes. Uh, but I kind of snarl out at him, leave now. But obviously he ain't scared of it, so. <laughs> right, he seems wholly focused on the food out ahead of him. And I I'm, uh, I think that would do it for the, this time. Okay. Unless... Yeah, because R did bonus action and action, so that's all I can do at the moment, so okay. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Alright, uh... Let's see here. Pretty sure they're in range. Just gonna check real quick. Break from you, yeah, 30 feet plus, so 95 feet. Yeah. Cool, they're in range. Alright, I'm just gonna... Throw some lovely fire at them. Hits. Uh, left or right one are you shooting at? Um, you know what I'm uh, going to say? That you only have a clear sight line for weapons. Cool. I hit it for four. Dan, do you have a better uh, look at this guy? And as that fireball just kind of streaks down the alleyway past you and strikes in the shoulder, he looks towards you and he's like, Arr. oh, and then just looks up towards the sky again and starts sniffing at the air, and then again just starts trudging down. Great. Okay. Anything else from Drake? Nope. That's it. Okay. You guys see 
this thing starting to come more and more into view and it's not running but its walk is its stride is so long that even it's just sauntering walk is getting it through town at very high speeds and you guys see him just start walking right up the middle of the street so he used 40 feet of his movement to get there he is just going to use his dash and continue going Horace, he does not even notice you standing there. He is just beelining down through the center of town to the square. That brings us to you, Horace. Is he destroying the buildings? There was no buildings in his way. I'm good. Okay. Uh... I can do this. Oh. Morden, power my shield. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. What is your AC at now? 21? Ooh, 22. <laughs> That's a good AC. Does he need all three rows to get through? He does. I will get out of his way. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will uh take a dodge. Okay. Just let him to the food. I'm done. Revin, you're back. Considering the one in town is already in town, uh, it's going to pick up that little bag of caltrops that Revan gave him, and uh, how far out is the next one south of town? Um, it is still 30 feet south of, south of your map. Okay. Let me check one thing. What speed does he have? Uh, do, 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 do. Let's figure out this one. Uh, I don't think I can quite get to him. 5, 10, 15. Uh, I can, the back can move 30 feet. So I don't think he'd be quite towards him. Uh, What's the bat's fly speed? The bat, uh, 30 feet. I thought they had one. Ow, okay. Oh, no. Not very fast. Uh, so it's going to prepare an action when it gets close enough to try to toss out caltrops underneath its feet. He's coming from over here. This direction. Oh, which direction? He's gonna okay. Come from the right. Uh, then hit 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So yeah, he's gonna hang out there and then just try to toss him and fly off. Okay. When he gets closer. What's. I should have mentioned this before, but I don't think a bat can carry that much weight. I may. Oh, that, okay. Uh, in that case, let me look up here then. He's going to fly up here to get closer to them to kind of help give them some advantage if this thing starts attacking Forrest or Drake or okay. anyone else there. Sorry about that. I just, like, I, I saw the bat and then I immediately thought coconuts, African swallow. No! 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 <laughs> Okay. That brings us to the other hill giant. He's going to, much like his friend. He's come lumbering into the into the buildings that you guys are standing and watching him from. Except his straight line is interrupted. Dandy, are you on the roof or are you on the ground level? I am on the roof. So you see him, and he just has his head up into the air, sniffing. His eyes are getting wider and wider as he's going. He does not even see the building in front of him with you. He doesn't even acknowledge its existence. As he crashes directly into it, Danny. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Can uh, my hold action do something here? I will let you decide if this is an aggressive action. Well, it's going to end up hurting Dandy, so... Can Dandy ride him? Ah. So you want to jump off of the... You would like to jump off of the roof and onto the passing giant. 
Yes, please. Okay. Um, Frederick, <laughs> if you didn't get your aggressive action yet, you're about to. So, Dandy, you were able to you're leap welcome. into his direction, and he, like, so, as he's approaching Dandy, you kind of brace yourself seeing what's coming, and instead of jumping out of the way like a reasonable person, <laughs> you leap at the giant. And you fly and you strike him squarely in the chest. And now I need you to make an athletics check. You are doing a grapple. Sure. Athletics. I can do that. I'm hanging on a chest hair. <laughs> and so you do. We can't do anything official yet, Danny. It's not your turn. That's fine. But you That's are fine. holding on to this giant. And he just kind of stumbles through and into the building. And he's just looking down like, oh! But yeah, he's, oh, he, he, is, he is inside of a building. He has knocked down walls and he is just like looking down in confusion and terror at this small human who has just grabbed onto him. <laughs> Frederick, I will let you decide if your action goes off by that or if you want to wait until it actually tries to strike. In fact, since you can't hold it any farther, if you want to send yeah. your witch boy. Yeah, I'll, I'll oh. send the witch boy on the one that Danny's on. All right. So that way, if it does land, just stop over doing bonus actions. Awesome, Dandy. I set that DC at a hard 15. I was like, 15 or better is the only way she's going to get that. And, oh, all right. <laughs> it's, 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 I think Witch Bolt stops reactions, right? What's up? I think Witch Bolt stops reactions, is it? Let Go ahead and drop Witch Bolt into the chat for us. Yeah, pretty sure. Uh, let's go to the first level. 23. Chorus, it looks like yeah, I failed. I just checked on show description. I think you may be thinking of shocking grass. Yeah, yeah probably. Okay. But yeah, on the other hand, damage. by the other hand, as long as you're yeah. And you oh, get to it. continue using it. Yes, oh, and you are now concentrating. Should be two da uh, two damage, is it? Yep, looks like. Yeah, two lightning damage. Yeah. Check something real quick. What so imagine just wearing rags and practically naked. Yep. All right, cool. Um, Frederick, can you recast? Witch Bolt for me, and then give yourself that spell slot back when you're done. Gotcha. Me. Feel the load. There we go. There we go. Everything all good? Wow, this is the better version. <laughs> One second. My uh, concentration tracking API is not working. I'm going to try to figure out why real quick. If I can't figure it out in like 15 seconds, I'll see. Where were you casting which bolt from right there, Frederick? Uh, for my, what do you mean? Like, uh, were you using the inside of your character sheet? Were you using your token actions? Oh, it's the character sheet. Go, go to spells, I guess. That is still not that great. What the heck? Okay. Yeah. All right. I know why it's not why it's not working, but I'll have to fix it later. Okay. Anything else, Frederick? Okay. Uh, so that wasn't was my action. That was my held action, right? Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna move a little bit up to here, like towards the end, and I'm gonna try to get this one's attention and i'm just gonna yell on my top of my lungs in giant it stop <laughs> <laughs> uh do i have to roll persu uh, persuasion or something like that for um because i'm gonna try try to communicate with them like because they don't seem because like the other one isn't attacking anything right she just they're just walking to the food right they are yeah so okay so 
I don't know if yelling stop at them is going to stop them. Um, well, I'm gonna try to yell at the top of my lungs. I try to communicate to the in giant. Okay, go ahead and shout in giant. Make your make an intimidation check, and we're gonna have it be at disadvantage because they are very focused on all that food in the town square. Right now. So go ahead and make an intimidation check at disadvantage. All right. Intimidation. Is a Yeah, he does not notice you, Frederick. He's, He's uh, entirely too focused on the food in front of him. Uh, the one, that, the one Dandy's on. Um, either one of them. If it's the one oh, on okay. Dandy, if it's the one Dandy's on, it would be too focused on Dandy. If it's the one heading towards the food, it's too focused on the food. Dang it. Okay. Uh, that was my action, right? For yelling, try yelling. Uh, them. we'll we'll say that was your bonus action. You can still use your action. His action is the Witch Bolt. Doesn't he have to use that action that every was, turn? That was, oh yeah, if you would like to continue using Witch Bolt, that would be your action. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, uh, wait. Who you don't you? Does have the to bolt? use Witch Bolt again, though. You just can't cast another Concentration spell. Yeah. Uh, cool question. Okay, but you don't have to this, roll. The spell ends if you use your action to do anything else. Yeah, so, we're just Witch Bolt. Uh, does he get a plus one to damage or to uh, AC? Uh, from, from your wand of the war mage, I think it's damage and um, it is damage and yeah, because it said attack rules. Plus Did one. you drag it onto your character sheet earlier? Yeah, it's on. It's the uh, last item on my inventory. I don't know how that how that communicates. It should have automatically done it for you. If that's the case, that's all good then. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's looks like it's working. So I can't take another. I can't use another action unless Witch Bolt stop. Um, exactly. You have to stop Witch Bolt to use another action. Gotcha. Uh, I'll keep the Witch Bolt active on uh, trying to at least hold back this one. Okay. Switch your turn. What will damage one d twelve plus one? One D damage. One D twelve plus one. Okay, there we go. I was like, wait, wait a minute. One D. <laughs> yep. And that was five plus one. That'd be six. Okay, you got it. Just a heads up: when you're rolling in the macro, you can do the backslash R space one D twenty plus one, and it'll automatically add modifiers. Oh, okay. Thank you. And you're shooting at the one that Dandy has. Yeah, the one, the one I'm still locked on. You got it. Okay. I will keep it. Yeah. And then Flinch. Okay, so Flinch just sees Dandy on him. He should go like right in the middle of his back, like the part like he most likely can't reach. Just up there. <laughs> and just sting it, sting him right on right with his tail. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, we're... Oh, it, doesn't look like, it looks like it's still, uh, looks like it's still... Yeah. Wait a minute, why is it doing that? Oh, I got it. Okay, so, um, the way that we do sessional inspiration with uh, familiars and things like that is you can use it, but then you do not get it for the rest of the session. I I'm okay with that. Okay, so 19. <laughs> yeah, 19 hits. Go ahead and roll the damage, 19 does it. Just be able to click on the chat bubble. Uh, the chat, the yeah, chat attack in the chat in the chat box. There we go. Six piercing. And see eleven Constitution that. saving throw. Fingers crossed. Fails by five or more. Falls asleep. Okay. Constitution save. It does get a seventeen. Dang it! I can imagine if Flinch sting it feels like a little. Like that a, would like be that would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> and look at me, I'm over cussing now too. It's so hard. It's so hard not to. It's, it really is. Right. Try to be a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else from Flinch? Uh, no. He, he would stay on that one spot, or he would just stay on his back, like, like, like hanging on, basically. Every turn, he just tries to sting him again. Okay. Dandy, let's figure out what the hell's going on here. 
<laughs> she is dangling yeah. off some chest hair. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, to be totally fair, I, he, there's no way he can grapple this dude. Yeah, I know, you're, you're just holding on to him. I'm just, I'm yes. just looking up there, I'm just looking at the rule. So you are literally okay. just hanging on from the front of him, holding on to his chest hairs, of which there are many. Yes. But if you could. <laughs> so, uh, making sure, I, I, as long as it's okay, I'm, I'm okay with you. I'm going to make sure I have a good grip with one hand, and use my other, use my battle axe one-handed to just wail him. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> we're not, we're not, uh, we're not, a, we're not attributing anything mechanical to you holding on to this guy right now. Okay, okay. Then, um, bonus action, I'd like to use my Storm Aura. Okay. And hit him with my Battle Axe. <laughs> oh, nice. Not yes. nice. Good roll damage. Yeah, and, Dandy, as your axe slams into him, he officially has stopped sniffing at the air and just looks down in concern at you and your axe sticking out of his chest. He's like, oh! Uh, was my Storm Aura D6 or D8 now? I can't D6. remember, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, did it, it, did it go up when you got to level 4? I can't remember, I'm sorry. D6, D6, okay, cool. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so, I, I, you know what, I will say though that he automatically fails his, his dexterity save. Okay. Um, am I allowed to use an action to, like, uh, maybe swing away. The attack would have been your action. You could just let okay. go, though. Okay, I'm gonna let go and try to gracefully land. Okay, yeah, you're able, you're able to land without issue. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, nope, I think I've made my point with this guy. <laughs> Alright. Silrin. Uh, as Silrin is gonna begin to run, uh, he'll shout to Dandy. Uh, hold on! And he'll throw Bardic Inspiration her way. Okay. Are you still on the roof? Uh, yes, I'm going to leap across to the other side. Okay. It's an easy leap. Uh, and as he's leaping, you're going to see him cast a spell he hasn't cast before. Stage presence! That is a and lot And he'll of grow text. big. Oh no, my It's enlarged. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, Drake and Horace, you guys can start to hear wood creaking and moaning behind you. And if you turn around, you just see Silverin leap from one building to the other. And as soon as he lands, he just starts to grow and grow until the person standing behind you is how tall now, Silverin? Uh, tall? <laughs> we'll, we'll say. We'll say. Large? Is, does it change your size of category to large or huge? Uh, to large. Okay, so you are about 15 feet tall. So. Okay, yep, that works. Okay. That is all of Sorin's turn. The giant who was clomping towards the center of town let, takes a wary turn of his head towards you, Sorin. He looks yeah, concerned. That's, that's what I wanted. Okay. That is going to bring us around to Brevin. Okay, uh... Brevin is going to first move. 5, 10, 15, 20... 25, 30... And he gets 35 feet of movement. And, uh... Two things. As a bonus action, he is going to throw X at the one right there. The one I'm, uh... The wrong one. And if you to decide for one second. I have the same problem. I have a I have a Pact of the Chain Warlock that um, I actually have a closet, and I literally never let him leave my shoulder because if he's within a certain distance of me, I get magical magical resistance, and so he's just yeah. attached to my shoulder, and so my D and so like so my DM never forgets. I just leave the token on top of my token. Yeah, I'm a, but I uh, I just uh, cast a hex on this one giant uh, between the two buildings, to the uh, left of me. And I'm going to throw an Eldritch, and I have it where my bat was up here to attempt to give advantage on the next attack on whoever attacked this bad boy. Okay. So let's throw an Eldritch Blast at it. 
Uh, yep, that's a hit. Um, uh, so that's eight plus uh, four. Four because right? so charisma. And then on the hex, it, do we go with what it rolled the first time I put it on there, or do we re-roll it? Um, it's just we'll just do the six every time. That's actually what you want, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, now he has to make that a uh, wisdom saving throw of uh, a wisdom saving throw. Or he is frightened. <laughs> What'd he get? He gets a, a 16. Jeez. He's rolling pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he really is. He has a negative one to his modifier for that, too. So he's yeah. just like, he is so focused on the food, and now he's like thinking that there's a rival between him and the food. I'm up. Uh... But I believe that is my action for the time okay. being. And let me get into your sheet real quick here and see if we can turn Agonizing Blast back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Damage only, right? Uh, yes. It just does that lovely plus four to... Okay. Well, plus and my charisma to any Eldritch Blast to hit. So yeah. what this is going to do is it's gonna, it's gonna re-roll it every time, but it'll do it automatically. Okay. That'll work. Okay, it's on. So when you open up your character sheet... Um, what you're going to do is whenever you hex something, you're going to scroll down. Oh, I'm sorry, Agonizing Blast is already there. Never mind. That is not what needs to be. Um, hex. Okay, so. Sorry, I was setting up your hex by accident. Oh, that's fine. The part needs to be set up anyhow. Yeah, so I'm just changing that from name from Agonizing Blast to hex. So it's a global damage modifier down there. Whenever you, um, whenever you... Hex something, you can just open up your character sheet, scroll down, and then click that little checkbox, and it'll automatically roll your hex damage for you. Cool. And then we'll get your agonizing blast on there right now. Damage four. There are other ways to go about adding the agonizing blast, but I've noticed that every time you level up, it resets it, so I'm hoping that this will stick. Okay. Okay. Alright, so always leave agonizing blast on. Toggle hex whenever you hex something. Okay. Okay. Break. This brings us to you. Break you there? Yep. Uh, I'm gonna help Dandy out. Throw some more fire at that right, that lovely thing. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh. We want to make a save. Um, okay, we're gonna do chromatic orb. The one that stands on. Yep. We'll make it a level two just for the extra damage. As I'm gonna re-roll that, what the that is horrible rolls. Oh gosh, sorry guys. Using a sorcery point for that. Yep. Yeah, they're all below half. I'm just gonna re-roll all of them. Man, yeah, that's, that's not lucky. All right, well. Uh, it takes 12 fire damage, I guess. That's really unlucky. The chest hair protected it. <laughs> <laughs> Body hair is a great sports horse of armor. Man. Alright. Um... That'll be it for me for now. brings us to this one here and it is going to 
the it is going to lock eyes with Silrin, who now stands taller than it because Silrin is standing on top of about 15, 20 feet of building and is about 15, 20 feet tall. So Silrin, as this thing comes clodding up to you with its with its club out, that is its maximum movement. It looks up to you and it's looking up at you and it just raises a club for its head. It's like shaking its club over its head. Nice. Do you respond to this display in any way? Uh, uh I... he'll he'll just shout back at him. Okay. So go ahead and make an intimidation check. So as you roar back at him, he just goes, Aah! and then he's going to grab his club and he is going to swing it at you. Yep. He sees you as a rival for his food and you have not frightened him sufficiently to scare mm -hmm. him. So. so we're in, it's a 20 to hit for the first strike. Yeah, that hits. 16 bludgeoning. Second Ooh. one comes around and it is only a 12. Ah, uh, the 12 misses. Okay. Uh, it... ap apparently, I, I failed. Um, I can change that so you can roll it yourself if you don't want it to happen automatically. Um... It'll prompt you, and then it'll, it'll prompt you to roll it. Otherwise, it'll just... Yeah, it yeah the prompt would be great. So I will give you the chance to roll that for you, since I didn't tell you that it was going to happen automatically. You can go ahead and roll your const your con your constitution. An eleven does. I did not know. I did not know there was an API for that. Yeah, it's pretty handy. I tried to. I, I forgot to add it to this session. To this session, but it is on here now. So right. now, Soren, what will happen is, um, if you want a quick example, we'll go ahead and remove one hit point from yourself. Or right here, I have to give you concentration back. So go ahead and remove one hit point for yourself. Oh, yeah, I see it now. So go ahead and roll it at advantage. See it. So the roll doesn't work. And the, the, the advantage work. The advantage worked, the roll didn't? Yeah. Okay. That is its turn, bringing us to horse. Okay. Everyone's on a roof. Everyone's on a roof. Yes. <laughs> Everyone's on a roof except for Horace and Dandy's I was, now on the ground. I was on a. Oh, okay. Uh, Dandy's on the ground. Hey, right, buddy. Is there a space I can move forward one more? Or yes, the um, the building has been sufficient. There? The walls have been sufficiently knocked down that this entire space from here. To here, to here is just da, 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 da. And I will I will help Dandy in whatever she wants to do. Okay, so given the help action, so Dandy, your next attack yep. will have advantage. Cool. And and I'm good. That is going to bring us to E. <laughs> Can't. Uh, well, he is upset that this giant has obviously judged him as a lesser threat than everybody else. <laughs> so he's flying up here and uh, screaming, yelling, and being annoying, basically. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that way, if so, I'm uh, just to keep him nice and distracted to give Silrin uh, some advantage on an attack by taking the help action. Help action to Silrin, you got it. And that is going to bring us to the giant in front of Dandy and Horus. So, 
he is burned, he is javelin, he had someone holding onto his chest hairs, he is not a happy camper, so he is just gonna be like, oh, and he's gonna swing his club first at Dandy. Dandy, that is a 21 to hit. Oh, it hits, yeah. It is 21 bludgeoning damage, halved down to 11 for you. Cool, thanks. He then swings away at Horus. Horus, it is an 18 to hit. An 18 misses, awesome. and I can intercept half of uh, Dandy's damage before it's halved. Awesome. Where is oh, that? Oh, before it's halved. That's, that's... Well, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, so it gets quartered, though? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Where? Oh, there. Then D10 plus two. Up. Oh, six. Six points comes off the twenty-two for for a sixteen, and then half to eight. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep, that was <laughs> Frederick. So I'm gonna attempt that. Uh, yeah. Okay. At this point, I'm, I'm gonna break a witch bolt. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna cast. It's called a uh, burning hands on him. Uh. You will hit your friends. What? Oh wait! Oh, oh wait! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's um scorching ray. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'll see about scorching ray. Okay. So you want to cast scorching ray? No, no, no I don't. I, don't have, I have burning hands that I caught. Uh, okay, so I'll just, I'll just keep the witch bolt. I'll go up then. Okay. Go and roll the d12 I'll plus go. one. Yes, sir. Oh no. That is a plus two. That's two damage. <laughs> <laughs> Every hit point counts, right? Yes, <laughs> it's better for nothing. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think Yelly on this point is not he's attacking. Okay, so that'll be, uh, that'll be my turn. Uh, I guess I'll just move Frederick a little bit back here, and okay. I'll end my turn. All right, brings us to Flinch. He knows what to do. He's gonna sting. He's gonna oh. miss the sting. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can't break that chest hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Too thick for the back hair, man. Oh God, the back hair. <laughs> that's, that's what he's holding on to the entire time. <laughs> it's too coarse and dense. <laughs> All right. It's gonna bring us to Dandy. Um, Dandy is going to, uh, I have to reinitiate my storm order every time, right? Uh, you use your bonus action to set it off. Yeah, I'm going to set it off, and I'm going to two-hand my axe onto the top of his foot. Okay, he yeah. does fail his deck save. So go ahead and roll oh. the uh, roll d6. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. And Frick your eight off. does not hit. Oh, wait, Horus is giving she you had a had advantage. Yep, 17 does hit. Thank you, Horus. Yeah. No worries. For 12. He begins hopping up and down on his foot, just screaming. <laughs> ah! <laughs> no! Bad giant! Bad! <laughs> Alright, Silrin. I'm just gonna slide off the roof in front of him. Okay. Uh, I was gonna grapple him, but he had the audacity to hit me. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to pull both my rapiers out, uh, and I'm going to attack him. 15 for 13 damage. Uh, I did use a flourish, uh, which is for defensive, uh, so I gain two more armor this turn. Uh, and then as a bonus action, I will cast courage on myself because he hits really hard. Yeah, he does hit really hard. <laughs> uh, giving me an additional seven. Awesome. 
Thanks. Good. I like how I rolled a nat one twice. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's when, pretty unfortunate. <laughs> Okay, that is going to bring us to Revit. I'm, uh... We're going to fire an Eldritch Blast up of this one, in the back of this one, fighting... That, uh, E's messing with, and that's fighting Silrin. Okay. Oh, uh, I don't think that's gonna make it, no. Uh... Uh... Do you have a second beam with Eldritch Blast, or are you still at one? It's level five. Uh, it's level, one. level five is when I get two of them, so I think I'm kind of... And I want to keep the hex going on that thing, so I'm kind of tapped out at the moment. Right. <laughs> Break. <laughs> We're gonna try again. Um, still the one under with Horace and Nanny. I'll burn one more villager spell. That's a bit better. I'll keep keep it at that. Sir nineteen. You ain't bad. <laughs> he is looking really rough. He is jumping up and down. The blast of the chromatic orb catches him squarely in the chest. He stumbles back a bit. He is looking real rough. Hmm. All right. Uh, I will. Let's see. I will quicken a mind sliver, and we're gonna hit. Uh, which one has the hex on it right now? Is it this one? Yeah. Okay. I'll click in the mind sliver on this one here. Okay. What's the subtraction from its next? It's subtraction from its next saving throw, right? If it, yeah. He tells me he's not going to do well. He gets a five. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> And right, that'll so be my turn. Four psychic damage, and then what's the other effect it has? Uh, the next save that it makes, it gets a uh, one d four uh, negative. Okay. Right, Silrin, the one in your face is just screaming at you now. He is almost forgotten about the food and is just interested in fighting this challenger who has tried to get between him and the food. Mm. Right, Silrin. It's a 23 and a 15 to hit. 23 hits, the 15 misses. 16 bludgeoning. 16. 16. Ooh, good thing I hella healed! <laughs> so, when you when that pops up for you, the roll button doesn't work? Uh... Sword is now concentrating on roll. Awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just roll gone. That's not what we want. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes these APIs do some wacky shit. <laughs> okay, that is its turn, bringing us back to Horus. Oh man, I'm going to, uh... Gonna cast. Spells. DC's DC's DC 13 He gets a big old 2 Okay, 6 radiant damage Ooh. Yeah, he is He is on his last leg, guys He is looking up Go team shorty <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that is gone, sorry, Horace, anything else from you? No, I'm good Okay yeah. Revan, you're back. Uh, you just gotta keep doing the flying around screech and get this thing thing. <laughs> All right. Thing. Okay. This one down here is going to start wildly swinging its club around. Yeah. 
would a flinch do grapple check to stay on him while he does that? Um, in fact, he is not going to do that. He is just going to try to fall straight forward towards Horus and Dandy. I need the both of you to make dexterity saving throws. Are you talking the giant's falling toward us? The giant is falling directly towards Horus and Dandy. He has thrown his arms out and puffed out his belly as far as it'll go, and he is flinging it at you. Oh, here we go, buddy. <laughs> so, it did crit, which is why I let you guys take a saving throw against it. So, Horus, you're able to dive out of the way. You will take half damage from this attack. Dandy, on the other hand, is not so I think, I think Dandy has advantage because she's a barbarian. Danger sense. Check it out. Yeah, uh... I don't know what that is. Let me see. Level, level 2 Barbarian Ability. Oh, cool. Danger Sense. At second level, you gain an uncanny sense of when things nearby aren't as they should be, and a giant belly flinging forward towards you is certainly not as it should be. Um, giving you an Yay! edge when you draw joy from danger, you have advantage on dexterity, saving throws against effects that you can see, such as traps and spells. Again, I don't think you could miss this. You have advantage <laughs> on your save. You are oh. both able to dive out of the way just in time. <laughs> and it was a total of 40 damage, so each of you only takes the 20. Jesus. Wouldn't Dandy's be halved even from that with her raging? Yeah. Is bludgeoning. The 10. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> God, our bears are so tanky. He is now prone uh -oh. on the ground. And Roger. he just tried to hurt my friend Horace, so... Alright. So... Which bullet is again? Oh, let him cast ma uh, Magic Missile. Won't, won't he do anything, would it? Uh, magic He's Missile prone. would most certainly do something. Um, it's an automatic hit for... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. In this case, I'll cast uh, Magic Missile. Okay. So that Ooh. would make it nine. It's three bolts, right? Yeah, three bolts. Yeah. Would we increase awesome. damage as prone or no? Uh, not because he's prone, but. So, Horace and Dandy, you see this thing just throw his arms out and puff his belly out. And just. Aah! And just flop towards you guys and he lands onto the ground and his face is down in the dirt and you guys just see his three little bolts of light just go zink and then doom, 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 strike him three times in the back uh, 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 uh. and he is down <laughs> well <laughs> I mean I know you just killed him but I'm still gonna hit him <laughs> and all you just see is flinch just, like, walk up his back <laughs> just like wait flinch like his tail <laughs> He just wags his like little stinger tail right front of Boris and Dandy. He's such an ugly dog, but he's so cute. He's just he's so good. Good boy. Good boy. That he understood. He just started like kind of prop, prop you backwards a bit, <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> All right, that is Flinch's turn. Oh, uh, Flinch. Okay, so uh, the village giant has uh, he already has the uh, E on him, right? Yep. Yeah. Fly 60 feet, right? I remember right. Oh, you should be able to reach it. Yeah. Okay, so Flinch being the biggity, biggity big boy, he yeah, he's gonna fly straight at him. Land on the back again. <laughs> and. 19 hits. On save coming in. This one shaved. <laughs> this one shaved. <laughs> Alright. He does get a 15 on his con save. Dang it! <laughs> He's let. Yeah, He's eleven. So eleven is low, but the effect of it succeeding is so great. I don't want, I, <laughs> my, minus a D four for uh, mind sliver. Minus a D four for mind sliver down Wait, to is, eleven, which does still get in there. No! <laughs> imagine that just flies out and knocks them out. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Okay. Uh, that'd be all. Andy. Um. How is the one that's still standing looking? Um, he's still looking pretty healthy. 
Uh, is he in range of a javelin? I can't. I don't know how to tell. What do I? Um, I, I would say that he is behind three quarters cover because this is a this is a balcony right here, and this is the actual building. So you would have to okay. throw it through some stuff to get to it. Right. Like not like physically um, through, but like it'd have to. Am be I allowed to run? Is he run? taller than the balcony? Ooh. Oh. So you can do like a, yeah, he would be considerably taller than a balcony. So you throw it over the balcony into his chest. Yeah. You know, that um, sound, that tracks. Headcanon is Horus just told me to do this, so <laughs> I would like to... You would know if you could see him for a clear <laughs> shot. I'm going to um, Stormora and... Ja oh, wait, not Stormora, because he's too far away. I'm just going to Javelin. Okay. Anyone hits? Oh. Yay! Seven. Yay! Anything else? Um, am I allowed to move? Oh yeah, yeah, you have your full movement still. Okay. So. Then I'm just gonna come up. Come on, Horus! I'm gonna run. <laughs> <laughs> <To> help. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Sorin. Uh, yeah, let's keep attacking him. He has just crossed the threshold into quote unquote bloody. Uh, nineteen for nine damage. And I will I will use my last blade flourish. Uh for I will make it either way. For a defensive flourish. Uh, additional three. What do you already see it? What for the turn? Uh twenty. Okay. Revan. I'm uh I I'm, I'm also gonna bonus action heal. Oh sorry, yeah, No, you're good. That's the wrong spell, sorry. You're good. Alright, go ahead, Robin. Uh, I'm gonna start with a shot at this creature's back. Mm, does a 12 hit? A 12 does not. I will burn that little inspiration okay. thing and make it an 18. 18 hits. Good damage, too, for 14 damage. Someone that has the X has the X, yep. X and I agonizing blast. Yep. Awesome. And uh, I think that's all I got at the moment. Unless I want to move around, but I'm pretty good where I'm at. Okay. Break. <laughs> 18 oh. hits. Yep. And just, just, just die. Just, just, <laughs> just, just die. <laughs> For 20, it is good damage, and he is looking very rough now, but he lives. Well, I will... I'm just going to firebolt him. Down. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. That brings us to its turn. And I think everyone knows exactly what this big dumb brute is going to do. Attacks over. Soren, it is a 16 and a 20 to hit. The 20 hits. Oh no. For 19 bludgeoning, Soren. Oh, oh. just one off. I'm unconscious. So, you guys see this thing just take this big baseball swing and crack Soren squarely in the chest. Soren goes crashing into this building right here, badly damaging a wall, but not destroying the building entirely. Dandy wants to know why he's not getting up. Can Daddy see him? Oh, you guys would have just seen him disappear into a building. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Horace. Horace. Horace is on the move. Uh, uh, Horace is on the wrong thing. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, this, judging from the last guy's flop, can this guy flop here? Um, you would have had, you would know. You are just out of his reach. His flop okay. distance is 5 feet. Okay, <laughs> I, I run in front of, I run in front of Dandy. I, I take a second breath. Where, where is that? 
Second wind. Yep. Oh. I'm concentrating. Something's wrong. How many? Oh, do I just roll the? Yeah, you can just roll. Yeah. Yeah. Plus. Set plus two, so five. Okay. Oh, so are you concentrating on something? Yes, I'm concentrating on my armor. Okay. <laughs> uh. And how glorious so we So one d ten plus your fighter level, right? Is that right? I think so. Okay. I thought it was plus my proficiency. Um. And spells. If I can be giving cover to Dandy, that's great. Just for my position. Um, you know, I've never really allowed individuals to get cover before, so I don't really think that's going to work. Unless you can mechanically do that somehow. Ability or class feature. I appreciate the thought. <laughs> Did that come up? I thought I just cast the, heal the spell. The healing word worked. The healing word just popped up. Okay. I don't see it on mine, but fine. We healing world sil silverin. Nice. Uh, awesome. Okay. For six, Silren. We'll say that Horus can see your feet sticking out of the building. Oh, <laughs> like the wicked witch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got up there while he was big and shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. All right. Okay. Bunch of things done. Revan, you're back. Uh, it is just going to fly around and give advantage to the next attack made against this thing. Okay. That brings us to Frederick. Cast a uh, firebolt. Okay. It's a burn opportunity. Twelve is not gonna do it, unfortunately. Darn it. Yeah, low rolls, unfortunately. Very, very uh, bad roll All section right. tonight. Yeah, so I'll just run up with the. the... Oh, I'm still on the Just run up here, and, and can I use Misty Steps as a cantrip? And it was or a bonus that... action, it's a level spell. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be a normal spell. You... Oh, okay, never mind. Because right. Firebolt... You can is, use... fire... is Firebolt a cantrip or a level spell? Firebolt's a cantrip. Then yes, you can. Oh, okay, cool. Is it cool to use Misty to, to jump across this building over here? 30 feet to wherever you can see. Alright, alright, alright. Just... Let me just do the best. Did I cast a uh, shatter earlier? No. No? Why don't I have one? Oh, should we have three then? You guys had those uh, goblins on the road and have not rested since. Oh, that's what. Oh, you weren't in that fight. So, no, no I don't know not. why you would have cast shatter. No. So, I'm just going to use Misty Step to jump across the building okay. and put myself over here. And I'll be at my turn. All right. That's what you going to do. Uh, you don't shank him. <laughs> Twelve won't do it, unfortunately. <laughs> Dang it! This guy also has coarse thick back hair. Uh, he shaved in one patch. <laughs> yeah, it's just that one patch. Flinch just decided to shank. Uh, okay, yeah. I, he's he has a disadvantage because of the battle rate, right? Uh, I believe actually the help, the help action on him. Yeah. Horus, uh, I'm sorry, Brevin. Who who are you giving the help action to? Is it just whoever hit him next? Uh, yeah. So, Frederick, that would have meant that your firebolt struck him. Oh, oh. Cool. So, we'll go ahead and move back and say that happened. But he is still standing. Um, and the sting from Flinch does still miss. Alright. Uh -huh. Go for it. Dandy. Kick his ass. Alright. Dandy. But... <laughs> Alright, Dandy. Uh, I'm going to run in and hit him with my axe, please. As, uh, as one does. Initiating storm aura. 
Oh. 16's gonna hit. And oh, then let's, yeah. let's roll the d6 from the Storm Aura first. Okay. Dex save, he does get... <laughs> he does succeed on his dex save. Alrighty. Andy. I'm aiming for his feet again. <laughs> How does he go down? So, um, I no. hit his, uh, I hit his, uh, top of his foot so hard that it literally, like, the, the kinetic energy vibrates up his leg and just shatters everything up to his hips. And then he just topples over, <laughs> face first, onto his floor, wounds everywhere. Still just reaching out towards the center of town. No, no snacks for you. I could imagine he just fell sideways and just crushed an entire house. <laughs> it's like, good work, Danny. <laughs> I'm, uh... Is he dead? Oh, yes, he is quite dead. Hey, you see, it good work. He's on his <laughs> back. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll go ahead and take our break now. Okay. And when we come back, we will deal with the aftermath of all of this. Yeah. Um, Silverin did say that he might go get those back into the forest and come back and take a nap. So, as the smoke settles and the dust settles around Amphail, and you all see the townspeople slowly making their way back in after just a few minutes of silence in the town, and... all like to do now that you have successfully thwarted this pair of hungry giants that were trying to wreak havoc on Anvil. Was there anything on them? Let's find out. Want to roll a only, D100? If only I had a button that I could roll to get to whatever each of these guys is. So the first one had a giant-sized water snake inside of it, as well as one dead trout. <laughs> There's a treat for Flinch. Hey, he's digging that. The second giant had on it a giant sized smoking pipe, probably about as long as Horus is tall. <laughs> and also a five foot length of chain. Five feet. Uh, these, these, these giants did not seem like the, uh, like the Accumulation of wealth types. I'm, I'm more puzzled about why he has five feet of ch chain. It was a ring. It was a <laughs> ring. <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> he thought it looked cool. <laughs> hmm. It's going to be interesting when you guys start rolling on like cloud giant bags and like, fire giant bags. because You guys have been fighting hill giants. They, they don't. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm assuming with it being nightfall by this point, it would oh, yeah. probably be oh. crazy for us to attempt to actually try to backtrack them at this point. Uh, that being said, it may be possible for us to actually, in the morning, follow their trail and see where they came from precisely. Agreed. So, like, what time is it right now? Like, it's like dead, we'll, dead we'll of say night. It's like nine or nine o'clock at night. Okay. Well, there's still time to continue the festival. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably be like three in the morning or something at this point. <laughs> okay. Happens pretty fast. Yeah, combat happens fast. Remember, each round of every single time it goes from initiative twenty down to zero, it's only six seconds. Mm -hmm. oh, that's that's crazy. I didn't, I, yeah, I because really essentially all those actions we take each round, we're all doing at the exact same time. Yep. Yeah. All right. So it's just, it has to be slowed down because you can't figure out what everybody's doing if everyone just talks all at once. <laughs> I mean, so. I don't know why. That sounds interesting. <laughs> it's like the biggest cluster F ever. As you guys are getting all this together, searching the giant's bags, you guys see, you guys hear um, a very deep voice. Where are they? Take me to them! Show me where are you guys see 
Tilindar, Roaring Horn, turn a corner, massive bulk, a, a enormous broadsword dragging behind him. And Zumior, the elf captain of the guard, trailing behind him, he's like, Sir, sir, please, please, you have to calm down. And he's like, No, where's the... Oh! And he turns the corner and sees you all. And he's like, Oh. Yeah, you missed the party, sweetheart. <laughs> you imagine him, like, the... Him coming in and just see the rest of us is like, Hi, how you doing? <laughs> so he's like, Whoa. Oh, that's... That's almost disappointing. And the elf is behind him is just like shaking his head. Uh. We decided that with this being the first day of your rule over the town of Ampale, that you having to soil your hands with such as this would be far beneath you. This was our gift to you. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> And as you guys are talking to him, and he's thanking you all. The townsfolk are beginning to come back into the into the city. Minimal damage. You guys managed to head them off before they managed to get deep into the town. And so you guys have managed to prevent quite a bit of damage with your, with your quick thinking and good planning. So yeah. as he's looking around, he's like, well, we're, we're shaking his head, trying to clear his thoughts. Like, we're most, most thankful that you were here. Most certainly. We were not capable or prepared to deal with such an assault. We probably would have, would have likely been destroyed. So, I hereby claim that the rest of this festival is in your honor. And as he says that, a whole bunch of people start cheering. And it takes it takes a while, but after a few minutes, the music does begin once more, and the festival does come back into swing. Uh, Dandy's just gonna yell chair. And he's like, <laughs> chair! And he brings it on over. <laughs> Thank you. And. Actually, really um, what? Did the giants. Uh, you know how the last. Like, the, had that really weird note about the, the feast, the, huh? the hall? Remember, like, two sessions back, we had we ran yeah. to those, like, the giants, like, yep. we had that really crappy written wrote notes. You want to go feet. through the bag and see if this one also has some notes? Yeah, it has, like, anything, re like, resembling whatever that piece of paper had. Okay. So, as the sure festival giant, right? recommences and you go through this giant's bag, you can find at the very bottom of one of them a crumpled up piece of parchment. It has been crumpled up and just shoved into the bottom of this bag and obviously completely forgotten about. It is another piece of parchment with the same words on it says, well, now you know that although it is horribly misspelled, it does say Rud Hog. Big meat. Everyone go. Same thing as the last one. And, uh, I had it to Brandon. Says, but who has a bag of holding? Or, My god. I don't think... or do, we, do we not have one? I don't think any of us have one yet at this point. Higher uh, level characters? Not, not a bag of holding, sorry. <laughs> uh, we, we have a party inventory. A party, yeah. a, loot, a party loot. Yeah, you guys do have party Yeah, party loot. My apologies. I was like mm -hmm. completely somewhere else right now. <laughs> wow, ish. Reward? <laughs> oh. There, so there are children <laughs> jumping on the giant corpses. Uh. <laughs> this town is so up dandies. I like alley. I love it. Oh, uh, incidentally, um, uh, Frederick? Yeah. Uh, your, uh, does your character have the spell identify? Yes, I do. We were wondering last session if he would be willing to, do you remember the black round powder stuff that was in the pepper shaker we collected? Yeah, it was, it was, it was explosive. I don't, we don't know if it's actually, we don't know. confirmed yet. I think the we party's worried that, like, could... they'll open up a singularity or something. <laughs> we were wondering if you could cast... We were wondering if you could cast the Identify spell upon that. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, that's my last uh, spell. Perfect. No, it's a... Uh... Ritual. Yeah. Oh, as, as a ritual? Like, yep. Perfect. Yeah, cast as a ritual. Incidentally, if you do have it in your spellbook as a ritual, my character would not mind getting a chance to copy that so he could do the same thing just for some... Just so we, just in case we need a, just in case we need 
need to identify a lot of stuff in a quicker hurry at some point. Yeah, two hands are better than one. Or two yeah. hands are better than one. So, yeah. Uh, you could, like, do it during the party or find an end and do this all. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys can do it wherever you want to. I mean, the, the town is very obviously extremely friendly to you now. Um, in yeah. addition, the to what to the to the town master now making the celebration in your honor instead of his a big deal for a man of this of this quality. <laughs> um, in addition each to one, that, um, in addition each to, one of, of the little black beads is a baby sphere of annihilation, <laughs> which is activated when you identify them. <laughs> God, oh man, imagine having a DM that evil. <laughs> Holy crap. There's yeah, the DM trying to kill you. <laughs> I, I remember because Dandy was eating them. Oh. Them, <laughs> eating them on her eggs, yeah. And we were making a uh, joke like, oh, what if there were explosives? And she, 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 we literally made uh, Dandy turn herself into a freaking bomb. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll cast, I'll cast Identify a chill, uh, and with Brendan. Each one of them is, as you predicted, a, it's almost the the closest thing that you could compare this to. That is, it, it would be a necklace of fireballs. Oh, uh, uh, the closest uh, thing you, can, you could compare it to would be a necklace of fireballs, just on a much much smaller scale. So, those of you that know how a necklace of fireballs works, pick up one of those little powder. pick up one of those little spheres and throw it, and when it hits, it cat it basically. Asks fireball where it hits. Basically, grenade. <laughs> these, each one of these, when thrown at a sufficient velocity, when it strikes, will deal 1d4 fire damage. So, they're like super baby fireballs. There is 100 of them. Is there, is there any limit to how many of them can be thrown at once? I don't need necklace of fireballs. How small are they? How small I will are they? need necklace of fireballs. <laughs> are they like marble size? A, a necklace you can literally rip all the balls and throw them at once. Cool. So what you're telling me is what 100 of these things we have. Now that you guys are aware of what it does, be very careful with them. <laughs> no <laughs> one gives them food candy. <laughs> so we have 100 of them? Yep. Oh my gosh. So it's a, it's a 100 d4 damage. You guys want to roll it and see what, it, what the max would be like if you just threw the whole fucking shaker? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Do it! <laughs> okay, so if they all crit, that's a solid 400 to the face. Or if they all like did full, full cool. damage. So you're looking at somewhere around between 200 and 300 on average, probably. You guys, you guys have not yeah. yet come across my, my absolute love of just magic items. Now you have, so. Yes. We are finally in a campaign that lets me throw magic items at you guys, so be ready. So, you guys know how you were oh like, fighting earlier? And this entire fight, we were on the rooftops. I was thinking this whole thing entire time. Like, we just basically have a powder keg bomb. We could have <laughs> we could, we could have reenacted the scene where Aaron blows up the freaking uh, uh, Ron Reese Titan. <laughs> so, it can be thrown up to 60 feet. These cannot. Uh, the, the range on these is only. It, it is a miniature, so. Fire okay. of fireballs is where I'm getting the template for this magic item, or the magic okay. items, I should say. Um, mm -hmm. But instead of 60 feet, your throwing distance on them is only going to be 20. Okay. They are tiny little guys. I may make some exceptions for range if you get them all together and throw them in some sort of like pouch or something. Get creative, and you can get, extend that range beyond the uh, feet. Fireballs range itself is is normally a 20 foot radius sphere. These make a five foot radius. Quick question. Can they explode if ignited? Ignition does nothing to this. Oh, damn. I was like, putting a little pallet, a little string attached. Light the string, just chuck the thing. <laughs> chuck the thing. <laughs> so it's so, a uh, five radius? Five foot radius sphere. Still, Wait, would, that, that, would, that, would that be just one square or nine squares? It would be nine squares. One. Nine squares. No, okay. no, no. Five foot radius. So that means five on all sides. So it'd be four squares, right? Yeah. Four squares, right? Yeah. Cool. Wonderful. Still, you could glue them to a sling stone. That would be yeah. that would... See what I mean, guys? Clever, clever yeah. applications. I'll get you guys. 
Oh man, can you Suddenly, add them to like a magic stone and like... Suddenly a sling is a much more viable weapon for once. For real, man. <laughs> Have fun with that, guys. Will do. Um, uh, Don't give it to me because I will probably use it. I was that. I was strongly considering what I was going to do if the person that was carrying them fell like off a house or something. That was like a thought that I was having. Like, what's gonna happen? If that well, happens? what's gonna happen is 242 damage to <laughs> one person. Where'd that crater come from? <laughs> uh, and suddenly we see why they gave it to the guy who can uh, walk on ceilings and walls. Make it just a little harder to fall. Exactly. <laughs> no wonder those eggs tasted so bad. <laughs> yeah, we, had, we, had, we had like 230 of them, and Daddy was Daddy, yeah. <laughs> They were in a salt and pepper shaker. She was just eating salt. Okay, I just love this. In this context, Daddy was just eating straight pepper. <laughs> She was okay with it. It was on eggs. It was on Salt eggs. Salt and pepper go on eggs. <laughs> so diamond <laughs> dust and tiny explosives. <laughs> just ate so much of it. Can I suggest that we put them into like, put them into like a pouch with ten of them in one pouch of some sort? So we can split it, make it into like ten charges type thing, and the damage seems pretty good for for that. That actually yeah, would make some sense so we could also measure them out faster than having to count them out individually. Especially mm -hmm. on the, like, on the turn, we want to have them ready to go. Yeah. We can call them pepper balls. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, uh, during, dr while everyone's resting for tonight, uh, what I like to do is I like to take all, all the balls and put them into, like, uh, ten balls together and put them into, like, a pouch and seal it tight. Fantastic. That'll give us, like, what? Ten, uh, ten yeah, balls? Ten, 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 ten bollies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Is there a way we could re make more of them if we uh, learn how to do it, or no? I, I would say ten. that you guys trying at your current level could be very dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, do have a, we do have a dandy and like two giant meat walls. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear, you said they're each one of them is one d four plus three, no, or just one d four. Every one of them is just one d four. Okay. Yeah. Plus three. Where did that come from? Uh, don't mind, Tori. Okay. <laughs> we'll do. Each one I'm of them uh, is just straight one d four. The um, blast radius does not expand in that packet of ten, so it, the only thing that that's fine. compounds is the damage. Um, yeah. Again. I would love to hear what interesting ways you guys have to apply these. So, one of the ways I'm thinking of is like blowing down doors, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks good for that. All, all, all I'm saying. Or, a, um, <laughs> or perhaps a other way to utilize them. If we. But for starters, we could. But if we. Well, possibly attachment to, say, like, um, uh, arrows, javelins, things of that nature for our martial characters oh. to have a little bit of elemental damage. Yeah, for pass fire damage. Get past, or, uh, get past magical resistances. Yeah. But how, but how, but how much do you attach to one arrow? I guess if you detach the pouch to the arrow. Theoretically, if you wanted to, we would, to really do it, well, actually, we might be able to because we do have a forge fire You guys do? Oh, yeah, make, uh, make fire arrows. Essentially, with, essentially, you'd want a forge cleric or a, um, a artificer of some sort. But you could literally, like, I'm gonna put one right at the base of the arrow where the arrowhead is, and a few more down the shaft as a chain. And then, as it hits, just ign hit, ignites each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. So, you still get your normal. Normal attack, but you also get the additional damage from all of those. And it also becomes an AoE for anything in the radius as well. Yeah. yeah. There's all sorts of nasty ways we can utilize that this could be is, utilized. Is there a way we could launch them and mid launch uh, it breaks apart like a buckshot? No. Not not based on the description of, of the necklace. 
if we no, get no, no, no. It, it, it's on it's, it's like an impact thing on, it's based on how we throw it because i'm saying like, if we throw like a like a like, a, like a, back at the pouch thing if we throw the pouch and the pouch breaks apart like mid uh, mid launch so what i'll say something. for things like that is it will require a series of checks to pull it off successfully uh, I'm, I'm interested because like, like, the construction I'm of the device please. the construction of the device the proper execution of the device, it'll it'll be a multiple layers of success or failure, technically. We work on this. Probably <laughs> the simplest way to do something like that. Probably utilization of the catapult spell. <laughs> God damn. There we go. <laughs> for, uh, there we go. Now, bear in yeah. mind, I've you can tell I've played an artificer before because I've can, uh, played a fruit. Right, I love send a, send love a frying catapult. can with a dozen of those strapped to it somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Or even just little patches we already have yes, made, send it because. But um, but yeah. So guys, when it yeah. comes to when it comes to unique applications like that, um, I'll need detailed descriptions on how you intended to pull it off, and then it'll be checks on the actual on the actual doing of the thing that you want to try. Right. Warm oh, back your mage hand drops it from thirty feet up. <laughs> uh, oh, that's true. You can also give you can directly give the pouches to one of the familiars. The familiars could technically throw them Yo, for you. Yo, Turk Scree and Flitch is <laughs> dropping mines. So, so, so on their turn, they could they could theoretically throw it twenty feet, and they would basically be give be, be gaining a special attack that they could do. Yeah. And then, then you wouldn't even require any actions on your on your part as well. It's another way, you can, another thing you can do with it. There would certainly be a limitation to how many familiars you carry. Yeah, they may just totally carry fine. for time or something, okay, so but. How much you're putting per bag again? Like, uh, like what? Said ten. Ten. So, so it's as, you guys, ten bags as you guys are discussing this, the um, I'm just imagining that uh, that the that the six of you are just sitting in a circle, just oohing and aahing at this bag of what looks like little black ball, little black beads in, in the middle yes. of it all. And um, the party goes on around you guys, and the people are dancing, the people are singing. Um, Tilindar is back up on his feet and back up on top of his podium, singing and not drinking quite as much, but he still does have a flagon in his hand. Uh, but yeah, so you guys can you guys can take your long rest. You can go to bed whenever you'd like to. Um, yeah. Of course, okay. you have to go to bed. You can party all night long. You take a level of exhaustion to just deal. But <laughs> um, uh, I would like to though. I would like to if I have a chance to. I'd like to try to copy that identify spell down in my book of shadows. Okay, go ahead and just use the standard um, copying rules. I believe it's just two hours per 50. an hour or two per level and a certain amount of gold you need to spend. I think fifty gold pieces. I and think. I Let do me... believe you need to make an Arcana check, or is that only for scrolls? Uh, uh it should be both. No. I th think in his case, if it's a ritual, he doesn't have to because it's part of the whole Pact of the Tome thing. If you oh. take the Eight Book of Ancient Secrets. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, if you have a class feature that allows you to just do it, then absolutely. Perfect. Made it easier on everybody. Heck yeah. Yeah. The limitation is it has to be a ritual. He can't. It can't be a. And, but it does. It's not limited to any um uh, list or anything of that nature. Just any okay. ritual. But he can only cast them as a ritual. <laughs> I can wow, that's cool. Like... Wow. See, warlocks are warlocks have so much more complexity than people give them credit for. I think with all those invocations and everything, and the unique parts, like because I'm playing a pact of the chain warlock right now, and man, having having some of those invocations came in so clutch. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a uh, two hours and fifty gold piece. So let me go ahead and. I know there's a button for long rest, but how do we do it when we can't click our token? Um, so at any given point, you guys can just drag your tokens out from your journal. Oh. That would be one way to do it. Alternatively, um, there if you go over to your right side, Whoop, where you have that. those little action macros and everything there, um, it's the one that says collection on what? that. What you can do... Actually, that doesn't work. Just give your token out. Never mind. Um, so yeah, just go ahead, and drag, go ahead and drag your token out, and, um, oh, there might be other ways. Um, so in that collections, in that collections part, excellent. Um, so in the settings up there where you have your, your compendium and your settings and all that kind of stuff in the top right corner, there's an option that says collections. 
If you click on that, and then down on the first section there, you'll see the long rest and short rest buttons. If you click in bar, in theory, it should come up along the bottom of your screen. Should be able to click it from there, in theory. I'm trying to remember. What was the town name we're in right now? Amphail. Amphail. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you guys have your tokens out in very random spots throughout the map. It really is. <laughs> God, it, like it's like seeing this I map hope. and how long it takes you guys it took you guys to get from Waterdeep to here. And you look at some place like the High Forest. Dude. 400 miles from tip to tip. Dude, I love the detail of this freaking map. I know, it's amazing. Like, I love all the road markers, the names, the... Ah, I love it! <laughs> okay, so everybody's going to take their rest. Yep. Yeah. Imagine, like... Screen Party continues switched. early into the morning, and you are still hearing music faintly through your doors and windows as early as 4 a.m. when it finally hits the last drum, and the fires outside finally die down, and Amphail goes to sleep. The following morning, the town is enjoying a collective hangover. <laughs> Empty. Like, um, I, I can just imagine uh, Flitch walking in, like, engorged, and then, like, you see Scree, like, laying on his back. <laughs> so, the town is very obviously asleep. Um, around, what time would you guys say you would be rousing and uh, starting to come, starting to like take out into the town again. Uh, say early in the morning for myself. I don't think I'll be drinking that, that hard. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, yeah any, is everybody getting up early? We'll say like 7, 8-ish. Eight-ish sounds good. Yeah. All right. So as you guys wake up and start getting your gear together and making your way outside, um, you look towards the once you get towards the town square, um, Zumior is there leaning against the uh, leaning against the podium in the center of town, and he is kind of just like looking around, surveying everything, looking at the damage caused. Um, giant corpses are still there, and they're, they're getting a little bit right. And so he's kind of looking around, and he notices all of you guys come out, and he nods and says, Well done, you all. Well done, indeed. Here. And he tosses a bag of coins to whoever is in the middle. You guys can hear it jingling through the air as it makes its way towards you. And he says, Just a small share of the damage that you might be prevented last night. And he, it wasn't much, but he tossed you guys a pouch with 60 gold in it. Thank you. Oh. Well, much appreciated. Very appreciated. Well, I understand completely the life of the adventure. It's a tough one, and you guys need all the funding that you can get, even if you are working for Lords Alliance, Emerald Enclave, wherever you may be from. He says that he has prepared your guys' horses for whenever you're ready to depart. Thank you. Uh... Can you run down Amphail? Is it, what kind of town this, or little village or town this place is? So, like, you uh, happen to be speaking to the town historian, so you are talking to the right guy. Alright, perfect. Um, before we head out, is there like any anywhere to hit uh, here for, for any resources, tools of, of like? He says that they have all the normal amenities of a small, of any small town. They have, they have a small armor. He looks you guys up and down. He says, you guys look like, anything that we have is not going to be able to hold you up. It's better than what you've got. Um, but they do have a small armor, a small trade store. Um, 
he says that the shopkeeps aren't going to be waking up for another few hours. It is the it is the festival weekend after all? But uh, he's more than happy to let you in and give you fair prices on any gear you might need. Alrighty. So if you do require more. gear of any kind, you'll get straight PHB prices on any mundane items, any weapons, and um, anything, we'll say anything valued under 100 gold pieces you can get here in Enfield. Hmm. And Enfield's a smaller town, guys. It's probably going to be anything under a fi anything under 50 gold pieces. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I was asking for a rundown of Enfield, <laughs> on what we can get here. All right. Um, uh... There's one thing I may want to get if I haven't already. Um, uh, but I gotta see how much it costs right quick. And I want to do this just because we have a dandy and we also have a have a Soren who now has a strength score of a 19. <laughs> <laughs> right, I forgot about that. Nice. <laughs> I, yeah, dang. Okay. <laughs> Well, how much does it cost? What are you looking for? A block and tackle. A block and tackle? Uh, did we get a PHP open in front of them? Uh, what do you yeah, mean? What? Block and tackle? Yeah. Not black and tackle, block and tackle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ten, oh one, one gold piece. Okay, I want us to have one of those, just, and I'll pay for it myself, because, uh, it increases by like four to five times the amount that either our barbarian or our bard with the gauntlets of ogre power can lift. Okay. I... So, that might be handy. <laughs> I I would also like to purchase a horn okay. if they have okay. one. Like an instrument horn or just like a regular old... Uh, so you can uh, shoot uh, your uh, own? A horn for to signal danger so that I don't need to scream. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. We'll say that you can find them anywhere from two silver all the way up to a single gold piece. And the one that is a gold piece is very intricate, well designed, good, well carved, uh, even some filigree in there. Uh, I I want to go cheap, but I mean, right. come on, you. You just sold it to a bard. I was going to say, going for extra. Yeah. Uh, so I'll buy, I'll buy the gold piece horn. All right. you, can, you can put in your inventory as intricate horn or something of that nature. No. Yeah. Boss horn. So about the Gauntlet's uh, Ogre, or, what, or what, what's it called? Is, does it set your strength stat 19, or does it give you a bonus of 19? No, no, no. But it turns your strength score into 19. Yeah. So you can you add on to that or no? Um, no. no. So uh, if your strength score is already higher than 19, it does not change. Oh, okay. I'm just thinking like, what? Well, like, someone can like level up and like add a one point of strength. Like he has a strength score of 20. Like Jesus. Those aren't even no, no. the. Uh, those aren't even the best ones out there. Either. There's no. there's gauntlets. I think there's gauntlets of giant strength of various types of giants. That's the belt. Wild. The belts. Yeah. So some folks do reflavor them as gauntlets or whatever the player prefers, but usually they're called belts. Yeah, the belts. Yeah. Belts of giant strength, and there's one for each type of giant. What's the differences of them? Is they're variously strong. Or... I, will, I will put it this way. The giants that you guys have been up against... Um, actually, you guys got some information on the Ordning last session that you used, so I'll give you a little yeah. bit of info on that, Frederick. Um, you guys didn't get all the info on the but what you do know is that giants operate on a very strict cast system. What that means is that the various types of giants, there's storm giants, frost giants, cloud giants, um, all there's various different types of giants, right? And the storm giants are at the very top of this thing called the ordning, the, that strict cast system. And directly below them would be, I believe, the cloud giants. And... So what that means, the ordning, is that the lowliest of storm giants, the lowest commoner village cleaning storm giant, still outranks the queen of the cloud giants. Oh, that's wild. And what you have learned is that something has 
thrown the Ordning out of balance. You don't know details just yet, but something has happened to the Ordning. And that something seems to be driving the events that are happening right now. Alright. So, I feel like I went off on a tangent from your original question, Frederick. What was your original question? Oh, I have no idea. I was just like, wow, okay. <laughs> I, I completely <laughs> lost my train of thought. I was just like paying attention to you. Oh, oh, there we go. My, my apologies. What were the effects of each belt as the ranks? Oh, as they the ranks turn go your strength score into whatever that giant's strength score is. Oh, okay, gotcha. Some of them go pretty fucking high. Yeah, so <laughs> like the lowest I think is hill giant, and it's twenty one. Right, 21. and you guys, yeah. So, and the hill giants. That's actually that's actually a good observation there, sir. That the hill giants are the lowest in the cast system least oh, strong yeah. and that is what you guys have been fighting so far the highest is storm giants cloud. better look out i can throw lightning too storm, <laughs> storm on the top or cloud on the top i can't remember storm storm, storm. storm and storm is like 29 yeah God, oh my so lord cool. um just uh just a quick thing the uh the figures that you guys see on the cover of the book and on your landing page here those are storm giants yeah kind of figured that out they're, 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 they're great. Guys. I love Storm Giants. They're the, uh, they're the ones that are that are very human-like proportions. They're just huge. They stand like thirty something feet tall. Five foot two. It's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> just watch Dandy become the queen of the Storm Giants. <laughs> She's like sitting in this massive chair, and just that tiny woman right there. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys would like to do in Amber? I'm just having a ball. Nothing I can think of. Yeah, we can start heading towards Tribor. Yep. So, as you guys begin heading northward out of Amphail, your next major city is the city of Red March. It takes several days for you guys to get there. So, as you all, with your cart, your draft horses, and your several riding horses, northward out of Amphail, leaving the sleeping and thoroughly hungover city behind you all. That is where we go ahead and call it a session for tonight. Oh, wait. Be begrudgingly, <laughs> can I get to know the horse again? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Make it oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my session of inspiration too. Okay. Oh. Okay, so 11 is not quite enough to get you there, Silver, but it is not a failure. It won't set you back any farther, so you just gotta succeed on one more. Okay. And with Silrin begrudgingly saying nice things to his horse and patting it, that is where we'll go yeah. ahead and fade. Awesome game. Yeah.